true, true. You are the Lord of Lords, and we'll say yes, God, again. We still say yes. Our yes is in challenge. Our yes is in shaking. Our yes is in our follow ground. Our yes is firm. You are the God of our salvation, and we respond like we are yours. We respond like we're not bastards. We are heirs, and we have a community of people who say yes to God on today. It is the love of the Father. It is the Lily and the Riley. It is the God of tomorrow. It is the God who has sustained our musicians. Bless you, God. It is the God who has sustained our psalmist. We bless you, God. It is the God who has sustained our minister. We honor you, God. It is the God who has sustained our congregation. We give you glory, and we honor you, and we thank you, God, that as a church, we are never homeless. We are one body, and wherever you want us, we will respond to. Wherever you take us, is where we'll go. So take us where you want us to go on this morning and get what you need from your people. Push our hearts to cry out. We offer sacrifice. We hold nothing back. We say Jesus is Lord and the Lamb of God reigns. The Lamb of God rules. The one who died on Calvary, that's who we're after. The one who tried to slaughter us, that's who we're after. The one who saved our souls, that's who we're after. The one who protects us, that's who we're seeking. The one who keeps us, that's who we're pursuing. The one who sustains us, that's who we're chasing. The one who hasn't given up, that's what we respond to on this morning. Father, we thank you that you will be blessed, that you will be honored in this place. We thank you that no breath will be in rain, no praise will be out of practice. We give you something fresh today. We give you something new today. We give you something powerful today. And you shall respond. We thank you that we will tithe in our worship to you, not just our pockets. We will tithe in our atmosphere and posture to you, not just our words. We thank you that what it is you want, you shall get. You shall be worshipped. You shall be reverenced. We shall say Jesus is Lord. We bless you for your grace, for your mercy, for your honor, for your power, for your redemption, for your blood, for your sustaining power, for the resurrection of Christ that's still powerful. You are the God who continues to raise us the dead. Now everything that has been dead in us, revive it in you and today. Not just in word, but in action, God. Align our souls with your passion. Align our spirits with the blood of the Lamb. Let the blood of the Lamb wash us clean on this morning. Let the blood of the Lamb set us free on this morning. Let the blood of the Lamb respond to his people on this morning. As we give you glory and honor, we'll give you praise. We'll worship you, and we thank you. We bless you, because you have been faithful. We thank you. You bless you, because you have been mighty. We thank you. You bless you, because you have been true. And we honor you for what you're going to do in this place. We honor you that you have been the keeper, not just of our church and our apostle and our apostle. You got them, hallelujah. You got them, hallelujah. You got them, hallelujah. And we respond because it's your promise that's keeping him. It's your word of his life that's keeping him. It's your promise that's keeping him. It's the legacy that's keeping him. It's all God and none of him. It's all God and none of him. And we respond like we do, like we know you're true and we know you're God. We know you're God. We're not confused about who you are. We know you're God. And it shall be as your will is in Jesus' name.
baby One more time, say If you love to praise the Lord Say yes Yes Oh yeah Say if the Lord be good to you Say yes Yes Oh yeah Say if you love to praise the Lord I said, somebody shout hallelujah. I said, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We lift you. We honor you. We adore you. We shout hallelujah to the one that is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God that was slain for our sins. To you be all glory, honor, strength, riches, power, dominion. It all belongs to you. Come on, can we lift up our hands and worship the Lord Jesus? Jesus, you alone are worthy. I said, Jesus, you alone are worthy. There's not a God like you. You stand in the lane all by yourself. No one compares to you. You're the one that loves us, that rescues us, that delivers us, that heals us. So we say, bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. The one that heals all of our diseases. The one that saves our soul from destruction. Hey, the one that keeps our soul, keeps our minds. We worship you. You're the one that was and is to come. Hey, you're the worthy Lamb of God. You're the only one worthy to open the stroll. Hey, hey, my Sandaya. I say, you're the only one worthy to open the book. You're the only one worthy to sit upon the throne. And we worship you. Come on, forget about yourself for a few moments. Let us worship him, the one that matters the most. Hey, the sovereign one, holy, magnificent, perfect in all of your ways. You make no mistakes. You brought us from January to October. Thank you. It is only because of you that we're here today. It is only because of you that we've made it over. Hey, it is only because of you that we're standing. There's only one. The Holy One. Who was in this? And is to come. We are standing on the promises of this God. Who was and is, and is to come, and is 
That's all I can do. I have no other choice but to believe. Standing on a promise edge. I have no other choice but to trust you. Come on, say that's all I can do. That's, that's all I can do. I have. What he said he will do. He will stand by his word. He will come through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God. God will do what he said he will do. And he will stand by his word. He will come through. Yes, sir. He said, no weapon formed against you. That's the thing. Oh, Lord, it shall prosper. Come on, look at somebody and say, it, it won't work. No, no, no weapon. I said it won't prosper. I said it won't prosper. I said it won't prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. In Jesus Christ, there's no defeat. <laughs> Against all odds, there's only victory. In everything, he gets the glory. He'll get the glory. You'll get the glory. Somehow he'll know. He'll always get the glory. I said somehow he'll know. I just need a few people to open up your mouth if you know he will get the. He's getting the glory. He's getting the glory. He's getting the most. Shed on the meal post. I said, God is getting the glory. I said, God is the most. I said, I said, He's getting the glory. I said, He always will. I said, He always will. It may look like they're winning, and it may look like the enemy is winning. Somehow. Get the 
defeated. I've come too far to be defeated. I've been through too much stuff to be defeated. I want you to do me a favor. Let's take 30 seconds and praise God with our leader. Let's praise God with our pastor. defeated is because of Calvary's cross. If, if you need your communion cup, you need to grab it. If you don't have one, raise your hand. Our leaders are working to get it to you quickly. I don't care what I face, it ain't bigger than the cross. I don't care what I go through, it ain't stronger than the cross. I don't care what mountains I have to climb, it's not bigger than the cross. Make sure you get your communion cup in your hand. You can shout on the house, I'm gonna shout on the cross. You can shout on the job, I'm gonna shout on the cross. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? I'm bloody, I'm bloody, I'm bloody, I'm bloody, I'm bloody, I'm 
night after supper, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take ye all of it in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup. He said, this cup is my blood which was shed for you on Calvary's cross. Because as often as you drink this cup, you do show forth my death until he comes. So we commune together. Now I want you to put your, put your cup in a garbage can and praise God for the next 30 seconds for the blood keeping you, for the blood protecting you. The car accident that didn't happen. The diagnosis that you didn't get. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. you, if you just think about all the good things that God has done, something will start in your hands and move to your feet. If you're visiting with us today for the first time, we welcome you in this place. You're in the right place at the right time to receive something powerful from God. If this is your first time at All Nations Worship Assembly of New York, would you do me a favor? Would you stand to your feet all around the building? We don't want you to say anything or do anything other than stand. All nations, I want you to put your hands together and help me welcome these. If you're standing around somebody, stand up and put your arms around them and tell them welcome, 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 welcome. We want to welcome all of you watching all around the world. We thank God for you. Don't touch that screen. We believe by faith that God is going to do something powerful for you. We believe by faith that the best is yet to come. We want to honor and acknowledge so many people watching all around the world. Alfred Skipper from Cape Town, South Africa is watching. Nash Band from Canada is watching. Jacinta Lewis from Trinidad is watching. And all of you all around the world, all nations, help me thank God for those watching from all around the world today. Amen. We honor God and we praise God for what God has already done. Uh, we definitely want to acknowledge the presence of Pastor Ryan Ford. He's here. Help me thank God for him today. Amen. Amen. We honor you, sir. Uh, we are partnering with the NYPD for Warm Up New York. This is a community activity that we're going to do. Somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. Immediately following our service, we're going to be out in Times Square passing out blankets. That's right. We're going to do that. We're just not a church for the house. We're a church for the city. So we're going to be passing out blankets to those who are in need. If you have a jet if you have a new blanket that you can bring, please bring that blanket. If it's a gently used blanket, somebody say gently. gently. Yes, Lord, a gently used blanket. Uh, make sure it's clean. Somebody say clean it, clean it, clean it. Lord have mercy. All right, so <laughs> bring those blankets with you next Sunday. We're going to be passing those blankets out uh, in Times Square to do what God has called for us to do. We had a great time last Sunday for the ministry fair. Yeah. Amen. Shout out to all of our leaders. All of our leaders, please stand. All of our directors, please stand. All of our directors. All nations, help me thank God for all of our directors. Y'all turn around and face them. Turn around and face them. These are the individuals that will be leading us to the future. And we praise God for what God has done and for what God is going to do. We praise God for what he's about to do in this moment. All nations, I want you to stand to your feet. Right now. I am incredibly excited, beyond excited. So welcome to this pulpit. At this moment, at this time, our leader, our pastor, Dr. Matthew L. Stevenson III. It is because of the Lord's mercy. We are not consumed. It is an awesome.
awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, I could not be more happy and eager. And uh, I anticipate what God's going to do tonight, this morning. Uh, God's going to do some amazing things that will be irreversible, he promised me. So I'm excited to be here. We're going to make our declaration real quick, and I'm going to have you sit down because there's a holler slowly climbing up leg right. And I'm trying to behave. Repeat after me uh, with the strongest voice you can. We've got work to do today, okay? God is exalted. I didn't hear you. God is exalted. The devil is defeated, and we have the victory. God is exalted. Devil defeated. We've got the victory. Now from your belly, God is exalted. The devil is defeated. And I still got the victory. I give you 30 seconds to scream real quick. Get it out your system. I still can't hear you. I said I still can't hear you. Come on, let's shabak it. The high praise of God be in their mouth. The two edges sword in their hands. Shout now. In the name of Jesus, who is the very Christ of God. This is uh, an awesome time to be alive. Happy October. I don't know where the year went, uh, but I do know I have seen the faithfulness of God. Anybody in here just seen God's faithfulness? Uh, we're not talking about ideals. We're talking about oxygen and opportunity. Glory to God, as long as you have oxygen, you will have opportunity. And God is doing amazing things in the midst of his people. Put your hands together for yourself for making it. Come on, you can do better than that for making it. Thank you. I have not been here since July, and so you know I'm backed up. I'm going to try my best to not have us here until tonight. This is an expensive place, so I don't want to break out in a Brownsville revival, but I feel miracles in the room this morning. Glory to God. I feel the power of resurrection. Behave, behave, behave. All right, I want to, uh, before we go into our time of giving, I'd like to, first of all, send greetings to you from Mother Stevenson. Yeah. Honey, we love you so much. Uh, often you don't see her, but I am the husband of one wife. Praise God. <laughs> and around. Uh, when she's not here, she's managing my household and making money. And uh, I'd much rather have her do that than put on a hat to please people. To God be the glory. I got a grinding girl, amen. And so we love and honor her. We were, when, I, when I was at home, she was working on, along with Dr. Pierre, crafting out an amazing educational slash discipleship program. Uh, she much rather preaches or teaches in small settings where people can ask her questions. Y'all know my attitude is such that I don't necessarily like questions. So I prefer up here, and she prefers the classroom and the chalkboard, and we just do our thing that way, and we make it work. Put those hands together for the mother of this house. Um, it is not an easy thing. First of all, let me say this. This November, I'll be preaching 23 years, and uh, it is not, thank you, it is not an easy thing, particularly in an urban church context, for the leader to be away for months and the house be held down. I watched every service and the house was held down from Bishop Daryl Hill to Dr. Valerie Moore. Man, it was amazing. Pastor Ryan Ford uh, did an amazing job holding down the house. I was watching Pastor Ryan uh, when he was preaching and one of my daughters uh, texted me and said, you know what, this is why you get in trouble. You weren't supposed to be in church. Why are you sitting up there dancing? I said, that is not me. <laughs> That's Ryan Moore. What are you talking about? She said, oh, I'm sorry. He was sliding like you. I said, no, it wasn't me. So we love you, sir. Welcome home. Um, I want to say something. Uh, <laughs> um, I'd like to acknowledge, and I'm going to say the safest thing to say. You're going to get with me. Um, I want to acknowledge all of my team members that held it down. My, the ministry fair was so anointed. It was so powerful. I enjoyed it thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. I want to acknowledge um, this, uh, these couple of gentlemen, uh, whether you like it or not, or whether they like it or not, the rule of this house will be, if you try to swing on one, <laughs> you swung on all of us. And uh, that's the way I'm going to build this house. 
Pastor Jaleel Spence. I want to hear you all nations. Come on. Talk louder than the devil. Do it now. He's got a ways to go in his journey, but if you trust your set man, please know I'd never give my mic to a clown, respectfully. And uh, this man of God is destined, I say this to him very often, to be one of the greatest orators slash homileticians in the Absolutely. nation. Should he stay the course, we have a gift in our midst. And if and when the devil tries to throw a dart at him, we gather around him like a wall of fire. He will see his destiny. I want you to shout, hey, whoa, whoa. It's too early, Steve. It's so he will see his destiny. Now scream, so be it. We love you. We love you. Now this is the second one the devil is not going to like, but I don't give a nickel's worth of. Pastor Richard Tobert Jr. I said, Pastor Richard Tobert Jr. I said, shut your mouth, devil. I said, Pastor Richard Tobert Jr. This man of God is one of the greatest worship leaders of this season. Uh, he's a, he has a Kairos anointing, and I watch him pastor his team. I watch him develop them. I watch him uh, 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 host and disciple. And he held it down with all of his strength and all of his might. And the devil really had tried to kill him, really did. But it's too late. I want to know where my section is. I don't have all day. We got to go from zero to 100. Who running from a rumor? Shut your mouth, devil. You're a liar. This is a brand snatch out already. You hit one. You hit us all. Call it a cult. Call it a gang banging. Call it whatever you want. But we are a vicious army. And we will not allow the devil to devour our home. He will see his destiny. From your belly, say so be it. Open your mouth now. Say so be it. We love you. We have... We have a walking Ark of the Covenant in our midst. And as long as hell hates him, we gonna love him. Put those hands together for Pastor Richard Tobit Jr. Pastor Dale Telefero held it down, held it down, held it down. All of you, all of you. I don't want to get into names, but I have to acknowledge this before we go into our time of giving, because I'm going to do a lot of talkback preaching today. TLO, one of the things that you don't know, I spent some time with them this week. We have a value system where the men serve. Servanthood is school for manhood. And I would trust a man that enters into manhood before learning servanthood. Servanthood is orientation for manhood. Don't trust a man that don't know how to serve. A man that can't serve will abuse you, period. So you need men to be, watch this, escorted into manhood by the instrument of servanthood. And these men of God have sacrificed themselves unto servanthood without having to be seen. Will you give God praise for men of God who want to be men of God? Ooh, Lord. Come on, if you, if you praise God for men of God that want to be men of God, you'll stay off a tender. Clap your hands now. Chief is back. Come on now. You won't have to go on the app if they in the house. Put your hands together for men of God. Don't get mad yet. Come on, clap, clap, clap. Now you may be seated in the presence of the Lord to rate you and the crew. Yeah. Elder Glenn Gibson, and Reverend Josh Easley, all of you that held it down in my absence. I love my musicians. God bless you. Would you please welcome Apostle Reggie Robinson all the way here from Huntsville, Alabama. Come on, let's welcome him. Thank you so much, sir. All right, now y'all ready for church? Where's my clock? This is gonna be necessary. Amen. It's going to be real necessary. Dang. Glory to God. Now, I want you to do something real quick before we go into our time of giving. This is absolutely essential. You must obey me. I want you to look at the person closest to you, and you may need a minute because we're going to do a lot of talk back today. I've got to set the room where I want it. Okay, so we're going to do a lot of collaborative preaching. All right? Now, I want you to look at the person real quick. I'll give you about 12 seconds to do it. And just quickly think of two things you're grateful for and say it. One, two, three, go. Come on, do it now. I said grateful, grateful, grateful. Just two. Grateful. Grateful. Not perfect, grateful. Not ideal, grateful. 
Wasn't the original plan, but grateful. Twist and turns, but grateful. Ups and downs, but grateful. Didn't go how I wanted it, but grateful. Happened a little slower than I intended, but grateful. Mama didn't get to see it, but grateful. Grandmama went to the grave and didn't witness, but grateful. Didn't get the chance to show it off, but grateful. Happened when you wasn't looking, but grateful. Come on, keep going. Tell them something you're grateful for. Come on, tell them. Tell them. Obey me, Zion. Come on, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, my God. I'm grateful, Holy Jesus. I'm grateful, my God. My God. Come on, open your mouth. I said, obey me. Find something under the depression, under the anxiety, under the fear. Come on, open your mouth. I'm grateful. I didn't pass the exam, but I'm grateful. I didn't get the scholarship, but I'm grateful. The job didn't work out how I wanted, but I'm grateful. Credit score still in the same place. But my rock here shelf is great. Grateful. Sit down. Grateful. Grateful. There has been an, listen to me, Zion. There has been an assault, Elder Jazz, on gratitude. I've been witnessing it prophetically since 2020. After we were locked in those houses, it's almost three years now, I noticed that there was something that rose up in the hearts of men, fear, doubt, disbelief. And while that may be normative to human beings, you don't realize what's really under duress is and it's your level of gratitude. You can't be grateful complaining. You can't be grateful measuring what you don't have. Now here is where I'm going. If you spend your mental and emotional energy uh, in stress about what you do not have, what's happened is what you have is under neglect. I'm learning from the Holy Spirit that stewardship begins in gratitude nobody can steward what they have if they're mad at what they don't so there's a lot of people that preach stewardship and when people preach stewardship we think budget plan schedule invest options nobody thinks gratitude you'll never take care of what you have and allocate it adequately if you're not grateful therefore i can only intelligently deduce that people that are afraid to tithe have an issue with gratitude. It's connected whether you see it or not. Grateful people give. And grateful people give not to just make room, but to make sure their gratitude level stays on an all-time high. Listen to me. God has way more resources than you have need. In unusual, bizarre ways. And you're looking like that because you ain't never seen God move bizarrely. I've had God give me surprise stuff. Stuff that not only I didn't qualify for, but from uncommon places. Folk that look like bombs, bless me, my goodness. And there were other people in Gucci that were stingy. But when you are grateful, God will pull the ram out of the bush because your gratitude sends out a signal in the realm of the spirit that says, here am I, if you're in the mood to bless. Now, I'm warning you. That as we build this house, and we will build it, you're going to get uncomfortable. Glenn, help me with this. They don't want to yet. If you are afraid of money, you will not like me. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Yeah, the church might start shouting in the basement because you want it and don't want to admit it. But I'm at the place in my relationship with God where I'm like, Lord, if it's your will, it's your bill. And if you call me to it, you got to help me do it. Therefore and thereby, I only know when it's from you when I can't afford it. So if this is something you want me to do and something you want me to create and something you want me to orchestrate and something that you want me to curate, you got to find a way not to just give me the dollar. I want what's under the earth. I want it to come from the north. Help me over here. I want it to come from the south. Send it from the east. You be broke if you want to. I'll take yours too. I want businesses, multiple streams. Should the dollar crash, I want some property, houses and lands. I'll go over here now. Because the cattle of a thousand hills belong to the Lord. And I wouldn't serve a God that wanted me broke. Come on now. I, uh oh, wait a minute. Will never, it's coming from up here, be broke. I feel it in my spleen. Another day in my life, I'm going to bind the devil through the weapon of business. I'm going to bind the powers of hell through the levels of resource. Streams in the desert. I'm not preaching. Good. Now, 
Now, finally, fix this because it's not going to work today. Um, we tithe all God asked for was 10%. Scream 10. And, and, and 10 is the number of order. Which means that God, listen, God does not need your tithe. You get to tithe. Tithing tutors. In the same way the law was a tutor up until Christ. What the tithe does is teaches you divine order in your resource. Here's why. The devil knows the easiest way to get you in poverty, no matter how cute you are, is to allow chaos to reign in your financial life. Chaos. Where did money go? Chaos. Phone bills that you do not need. Internet bandwidth that you don't even use. Apps on your phone that cost monthly fees, and you don't use them. Empty gym memberships. I said that I'm here to preach today, and I'm not scared of you. Empty gym memberships. You ain't been all year. Every month that $34.99 comes out your bank account. Come on, preach back to me. How wasteful are you? Cars that speak to a status that you aspire to. As a statement to people that's no longer looking at you. Yeah. Red bottoms and accounts in the red. As long as you're in debt, you should not have bloody bottoms. What I'm trying to teach you is to <laughs> take care. Wait till I preach. Take care of what you have. God's been, listen, God's been dealing with me about gratitude and stewardship. And I know it's not deep, but here's how this works. And we're going to tie. If you don't learn stewardship for the rest of your days, you will live with a revolving door in your heart because stewardship ain't got nothing to do with money and everything to do with how responsible you are with your resources. You didn't need that ice cream. You could go without that Chick-fil-A. You just got your hair done. Why don't you do something to teach yourself to give, save, and live? The threefold goal of money. I'm teaching better than what they're talking. Give, save, and live. I want money not to keep it. I need to be able to do what? Give, save, and live. Because I like yachts. I cast out devils. <laughs> so I deserve one. Praise the Lord. Give, save, and live. Now. I know where this goes, and we're going to go ahead. Pastor Ryan, they love to say the preacher is just taking all the money. Honey sugar. <laughs> Humbly speaking, I had it before I knew you. And I'll have it should you choose to go. We good. Um, I'm not one of those that need the church to survive. I don't. And there are preachers, and I say this respect respectfully, who can only function in church spaces. This is their livelihood. Without this, they're going to work for Chick-fil-A. That's not MLS3. Had a career before this. I give you opportunity to learn your way out of poverty because it is systematic. Poverty and ignorance are principalities that work together in the mentality and in the behavior of people. And unfortunately, it is passed down from generation to generation. So if you're going to follow my lead, you're going to get this bread. Because we are missional. I'm at the place in my life where I prefer missions over conferences. I'm tired of church circuses. <laughs> you know, prayer breakfasts where there's more biscuits than breakthrough. Don't nobody even pray, you know. Sausages are no seeking. I, I want to be able to do more, you know, for people. We need some schools. Where's your faith? There are countries that need water. Where's your faith? We need brand new hospital systems. Where is your faith? I can preach on the runway just like I can. We need fashion. Come on, where is your faith? We can send gym shoes to, to Africa. Where is your faith? If you only have faith to sit in the pulpit and to preach the next conference, you have no real faith for real. I want faith for history. And it starts with stewardship. All right, Lord, this is only a $100 raise, but $10 of it does not belong to me. It is sacred. You're teaching me order in my life. How many are blessed by that? Come on. Don't get mad. I need amens for when I preach. Come on. How many of you are blessed by that? All right. I want you blessed. 
Pastor Darren, we're living in a generation now when I was graduating before I moved to college, you couldn't have told me that there was a way to wealth and a, well, a way to life that didn't include college. If you'd have told me somebody could make a TikTok and, and become a millionaire, I'd have told you you was a lying wonder. The world has changed. The season has changed. Our society has changed. And our kids are getting ready to graduate like, I'm not getting into debt. I'm not stupid like you. <laughs> My son is like, no, dad, that's not for me. I want to buy buildings. I'm like, so be it. Once I give you your money, you do what you need to do and get out of my house. This is why some of y'all uncles are still in your grandmama's basement. Selling mixtapes. Ricky, Ricky. Making shea butter. Selling it on the corner. Because nobody broke that mentality in their mind that you can do and be more. Come on. It starts in the classroom, and the tithe teaches me. Lift your hands and say, the tithe, tithe teaches, me. teaches me. That said, because I've offended you, that means I'm doing my job. That said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give. We're going to give. It's quiet. We're going to give. At this church, when we get ready to give, I don't want it to be grief. We're getting ready to give. Come on, anybody over here know that offerings are opportunities. We're getting ready to give. We have several ways to do that, and uh, the ways that we have to do that are here once he unlocks this, this, because I don't know technology like that. I just like to have it so y'all don't leave me out. Um, we're going to, uh, <laughs> you have the QR code, you can go to allnationsny.com forward slash give, allnationsny.com forward slash give. If you're watching online, those of you that have jets and those of you that have millions of properties, you can just send one this way. This church will find a way to use it, an excuse. You can give in that way because tithing, you don't just have to tithe money. You can tithe businesses and houses and whatever you want to do. That's between you and the Spirit of God. Now listen, we don't tithe in fear. If you're scared to do it, keep it. We tithe in faith. We're not like that Old Testament regime that told you you was going to hell and you would be cursed with a curse. Jesus bore that on Calvary. We tithe in and after faith. Say yes. Now, you can also text All Nations NY to 77977. All Nations NY to 77977. Let's do that. How many proud iPhone users are in the house? Come on. Come on, y'all and shout it. Get hydrated again. How many Apple users are in the house? Now, let me see where the others are. If you are one of the others. Is there an other in the room? You're an other? Okay, we need a nurse's board, okay? The others need our help. Okay, final way you can give is old school. Drop it in the basket, you know, drop it in the basket, bring it. I don't even know if anybody carries cash anymore, but we still take that, praise the Lord. If you want to drop it in the basket, if you're giving, stand up real quick. I'm going to pray for you. I love your precious spirit. I'm going to pray. Now, normally I want as much time as I have to preach, but normally I'd say, hey, if you don't have anything, Tell the person with the best shoes on your world to let me hold something. Okay. okay, you can tell a lot about a person from their shoes. Okay. Now, if somebody in the room has on K-Swiss, I'd like you to sew into them, okay? The white kind, praise God's name. Now, I hear felines coming out a little bit, so I'm a little on the fence, but... Amen. <laughs> Lift those offerings high to the Lord, will you? Your presence is life to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, to those that you've committed to this stead, those that have never tithed before or given an offering before, plant something in the seeds of everybody under the sound of my voice for a vision for generosity. You said in your word, and this is our heart's desire, whoever gives to the poor will never lack. Father, put an anointing on this house to give to the poor, not just from a place of sympathy, but to reverse things and life as we know it, to heal entire family stories. If you put it in our hands, we won't keep it to ourselves, but we'll circulate it in various means and ways to change lives. So do we bless you that the devourer is rebuked and you have opened up windows unto us 
and given us vision for what you want our lives to be. In the strong name of Jesus, we give you glory for it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and smack the devil and give. If you're coming, I want you to come and give your offering in the basket. Uh, get, they, that's prophetic music. They're squinting at me, discerning me. Give me something happy, please. <laughs> Amen. the Lord. Nehemiah, are you here? That's ironic. I want to see you after service, sir. Grace. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. He's so good. Praise the Lord. Okay, I don't want to start a war before I preach because I need you to be my, uh, my friend. And uh, I need to identify clear hollow back segments okay so I want someone on every roll to decide that they're going to be the loudest you got to make me look good for coming back <laughs> before, before we do that I've been building in New York almost three years now and uh, we're just coming to a place where we're plowing through follow ground and in, in case you hadn't noticed there was a very 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 dense spiritual atmosphere over this entire state it takes work Whatever has claimed this area has done so for generations. And so it takes a plow, a very unique plow, and I think we're making some segue into it. But since I've been building here, I have not been able to settle on the right pizza. And here's the problem. I get mixed messages from everybody. Everybody be like, oh, you just ain't went to the right place. And I'm like, I'm, I'm confused because every place ain't the right place, apparently. I go here, I go. And uh, I've yet to find one that didn't look like a hot Lunchable. So, so, and, and then y'all attack me. Talking about, well, that Chicago stuff is lasagna. Somebody called it a casserole. Tessie, I was offended. Please yell out a, a pizza spot I can go to. Margaritas, is that one? Is that the, who? Adrian's? I don't even trust that. That's not an Italian name. Adrian? No, that's a black name. Ain't nobody, uh-uh. Anybody, where you go to, Shara? You from, child, okay. Y'all don't know no pizza? Nick's? Who? Nick's Pizza in the Bronx? Is that good? Don't go to the Bronx? Oh, look. That's what, Elaine said that, not me. I'm from Inglewood. I'm used to it. Lord have mercy. All right. Well, I just figured it out, man. I don't know. I'm hopeless. They say I'm hopeless, you know. We're going to the Word of God. And we're going to Exodus. I hope you're not tired because you're going to have to help me preach this through. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. And I want you to meet me at verse 20. For narration's sake, I'll go all the way to verse 30. And I'm reading this in the English Standard Version. When you're there, say, I'm there. That's not enough people. I'll wait. If you see any Corinthian, Roman, anything, you're at the opposite side of where I told you to go. Reverse. Exodus 23. Verse 20, behold, I sent an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies 
and an adversary to your adversaries. When my angel goes before you and brings you to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, somebody scream the ites. And I blot them out. You shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them, nor do as they do. But you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars into pieces. I love you, old man. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from among you. None shall miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I'll even send my terror before you and will throw into confusion all the people against whom you shall come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. But I will not drive them out from before you in one year. Lest the land become desolate and the wild beasts multiply against you. Little by little, I will drive them out from before you. Here is our message. Until you have increased and possess the land. For accurate note-taking purposes, the name of this is Till You Be Increased. I'd like to open this up in introductory fashion by inviting you to join me. I'm going to give you permission, eight seconds is all, to find somebody in the room. I'd like for you to stand and go to somebody you don't know. Smack them on their back without being offensive and tell them you've got some increasing to do. Let's do it right now. Come on, do it, do it, do it. No, you're not loud enough. I said smack them and tell them you've got some increasing to do. Oh, yeah, come on. You've got some increasing to do. Let's shake this place now. You've got some increasing to do. Come on, obey me. You've got some, come on, Job 4, 6, how forceful are right words. Before you touch them, they may have not had the power to do it. I said slap them now and say, you've got some increasing to do. You have some increasing to do. You may be seated. It's real strange times. It's real strange times. Right is wrong, wrong is right. Confusion prevails. Indecision, ambiguity, discombobulation reigns and rules as a normative thing in the human psyche. We've been traumatized as a people, as a culture. It reminds me of another setting in the scripture that we can find a huge similarity to, and it's the Exodus. Our passage is a very critical segment of scripture as it highlights something that we don't like to talk about very often, and it's the conditions of the covenant. The covenant is something we receive with great joy. We don't like its condition. And because God loves unconditionally, we make the mistake of believing that there are not conditions to his promise. But you are living under conditions. Mm. You've got a covenant. There is a promise, but there is small print to being able to hand over what is the will of God concerning you. This is the root of disappointment for very many of us. We danced prematurely, shouted prematurely, got up from the floor when he promised it and didn't ask him, what do I have to do to position myself for what you just said? Somebody say the conditions, the conditions. I love the book of Exodus because it reveals a side of God that we did not see in Genesis. In Genesis, we saw him as Abba, Father, Progenitor, the one that creates and designs and orchestrates. But now we're entering into a different side of his personality. Now, all of the 66 books show us a different side of God. And if there were 120 books, we still wouldn't know him completely. But the Exodus shows us a very unique side of God. It's God the Deliverer. I, I love seeing that side of God because Exodus shows us that he will go to any means. He will employ unusual tactics, techniques, and protocols, and guerrilla warfare if it means setting a people free. Now! If we look at this just sequentially, it's interesting that Exodus comes after Genesis, which means that as he creates it, as he decides it, as he designs it, he goes out of his way to make sure he frees it. Wow. Hmm. 
He creates nothing that he wants to live in. Slave, your word is life. If he creates it, he creates it with an emancipation plan. A part of what that shows you is that as he creates it, there are forces and circumstances, there are environments and atmospheres that go to work immediately to incarcerate what he creates. It doesn't matter if it's a dream, mm -hmm. if it's an idea, if it's a goal. If he creates it, the devil wants it in jail. If he creates it, the enemy wants to, to limit it, wants to put it in what the Bible calls fetters, things that you put around the angle to make sure he cannot live but God has a plan for your freedom come on Negro he has a dream for who you're going to be and how you're going to live and how you're going to think and how you're going to speak once you're free but the problem is your freedom is not his responsibility it's his commitment but he needs you to obey the conditions there are terms to your freedom and the problem is we claim it and we name it and we even desire it but we're not willing to do what needs to be done to live the life he wants for us there are conditions Exodus does not just show us red sea splitting and plagues coming on the earth if you miss it uh, you miss the condition of God I will do this if you do that and when I do this, you must do that. It upholds it. Living under the terms of the condition is what amplifies the promise of God. As we peruse this record, we find unusual things that God does. And we learn that Israel's emancipation was not easy. Come on, go with me and sojourn. Yes, it wasn't something that you could put the favor of God on. To Cyrus, you couldn't even bind it. It was something that you just had to go through. And as you went through it, you saw God differently. Anybody remember God delivering you to the extent that you saw him in a way you had not seen him before? In Genesis, we know that he was a provider because we got the story of Abram and Isaac and Jacob. We're like, yeah, you're the guy that gives us stuff. But when he turns into Jehovah Sabaoth, the God that maketh war upon the head of those that oppose you, he does not look like the grocery store God. At this point, he's not playing games with those that come against the promise of God for your life. So he goes to war. Oh, yes, he does. He goes to war plow there. He goes to war. I'm talking to you. He goes to war. If he has a word over it, he goes to war over it and he's that jealous over what he wants for you. Now, we learn later in Deuteronomy chapter 1, don't go to sleep yet. I need preachers up there. Delve and be in charge, okay? Uh, we learn in Deuteronomy 1 something that is very unique, and I'm going to take the long route and then float it and bring it back down. We learn in Deuteronomy 1 that it should have taken 11 days. Somebody scream, 11? 11. Open your mouth, say 11. And, 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 and what should have taken 11 days to get here to end up t costing them 40 years. 40 now is the number of a generation. We lost a whole generation from the powers of disobedience. Let me parenthetically put this here. Do you know the price of disobedience? I know you don't. That's why you treat it like it's not dangerous. Disobedience is the easiest way to delay. You think it's the devil, but there is a realm of disobedience that you justify in your life. I'm working in here. There is a realm of disobedience that you've got the unmitigated God to attach a doctrine to. Oh, yeah. Because we can find a scripture for everything. And there are things that we want and things that we do and things that we think that's flat out disobedience. Ah, and the fruit of disobedience is delay. If I were you, I look at something that's late and I tie it to something I didn't obey. I'm talking to you. I didn't obey. Obedience accelerates. That's good gravy. Obedience makes it move faster. When you say, yes, Lord, things move out the way. That is a warfare weapon, but disobedience is the easiest way to miss the deadline. Oh, yeah. You want me to turn my plow, but I'm a labor right there. Disobedience, delayed obedience, creative disobedience, just disobedience. Disobedience because of parents. Disobedience because of tradition. Disobedience because of bad teaching. Disobedience, Prophet Jasmine, because I want to be accepted. So I'm going to disobedience disobey God for the sake of the pleasures of men. Remember, Israel always wanted to be like their other nations and it cost them disobedience. Let me tell you something. When the parents play, the children pay. Disobedience is why you have in your gut the things that you struggle with. I'm the iniquity in your blood. It's because somebody decided they were not going to obey. It's expensive. It's expensive. 
It's expensive, and we see that now. An entire generation died now. Uh, 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 our passage, watch me here, our passage highlights conditions. Now, I know that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Watch me. But do you realize how many gifted people and called people are still not in purpose? What we've done is we've magnified the presence and the activity of the gift, preach Negro, and we've not realized that the assignment is more important than the gift. We don't care that you got a gift. We want to know what you're supposed to do with it. And the problem is we put more emphasis on the ability and we don't look at the assignment. And the assignment comes with conditions so we never see you contextualize because even though you're in your gift, you're not in your purpose. Help me. Help me sojourn, children. I don't just want new toys to play with. I want to know that I'm in the right chapter of God, in the right season of God. I don't want to waste my time playing with gifts. I want my assignment. Wait, he said, stay there. I want my assignment. My gift is not what keeps me alive. It's my assignment. When Hezekiah was about to die, he didn't say, Lord, I can prophesy. He said, if you kill me now, the grave cannot praise you. I want to know my assignment. Because that's where the anointing is. Sit. So this reveals now that there is a certain condition, watch me, on how to entreat the place of God. Scream yes. No, that was Methodist. I said scream yes. There are conditions to the place of God, and I don't have to go back and reiterate this, uh, but what we're dealing with now are God's conditions for a place. Now pay attention. There are certain behaviors that are necessary for your place in God. Let's make this a little bit more personal. I'm talking about Israel and the land of Canaan. We know that we saw the prince of Egypt. We know about the promised land. You know that. If you don't know it, Google it. Huh, but what we're talking about are the, the wisdom principles that are deeply laced in this text, and we can apply it now to us because now, Glenn, what this shows me in my text, I'll get there and expostulate in a minute, is there is a place for you. If God could promise Canaan to Israel, then that means that if you are naturalized Israel or spiritual Israel or the circumcised of God as by the heart, then you have to have a place. I'll get there. You have to have a place. There is a place for you. I'll keep going until you get it. There is a place for you. I'm not talking about your seat, but there is a place for you, a place, a realm, a domain, a territory, a realm or zone by which you function. Listen to me. You won't function the same way everywhere. Shut your mouth, devil. I have a place. You think your anointing and your gift and your potential will be seen in the same way everywhere. But let me bust your bubble, Pookie. Your anointing has a geographic condition. There are certain people that will never receive you. You ain't anointed for everybody. The reason they didn't understand you, watch me, is because God locked their comprehension. Yeah. He blinded them like he did Eli. Because if they could have seen who you really were, they would have taken credit for where you were about to go. It was ordained that they misunderstood. I'm working in here. It was purpose that they misunderstand you. So never again get jealous because somebody found their place before you. You need to rejoice because I got a place. Come on, snap three people say, I got a place. I got a place. I don't have to be you. I don't want to be you. I like you. You're dressed well but I've got a place God promised me that my purpose would be executed in the right place your problem is you've invested stuff in the wrong place be seated be seated Canaan Canaan acres and acres of land milk and honey and pomegranates Canaan mm. The place of the promise. Let me minister to you, Canaan. Canaan, not marriage, Canaan. Not just entrepreneurialism, Canaan. It was bigger than a t-shirt and a shoe. It was Canaan. It was bigger than an audio or Benz. It was Canaan. And because if we get into the materialistic aspects of this, we miss the fact that there is a behavior for Canaan, the promise of God for my life and my reason. Watch me. What he was thinking when I was conceived. The very thought when he illuminated my mother and father what my name should be. Preach, Negro. Because nothing about you is coincidental. Your height, your weight, your race, your gender is even an assignment. <laughs> you can't even get a haircut without heaven adjusting their records. The Bible say that the very hairs on your head. 
They won't help me preach. They are all numbered. He is, he is very meticulously involved in your creation. And when he created you, he created a Canaan for you. Your problem is you want to arrive and don't want to journey. Scream the word Canaan. I have a Canaan. But there is a character clause. Yeah, a code of conduct. Now. I'm talking to a generation that can conceptualize Canaan. Yeah, God gave me a promised place. Your problem is the code of conduct. You, you, you don't want to adapt, preach, Negro. Adjust and become something different. Because here is one of the conditions. Scream, put your weight on it. You can't be who you are when God has taken you where he wants you to go. This is why it's taking so long. He's got to strip you. Come on, work now. Rip you. Where's my amen? He's got to separate you. He's got to renew you. He's got to teach you to talk Canaan, walk Canaan, dress Canaan. Your problem is you want Canaan, but you don't want the character that sustains it. Yeah, I know you want me to turn my plow. Can't do that. Verse 20. Yes. Of our text. Let's bring this together. I have sent an angel before you. Mm -hmm. You're going into a strange place, but it's yours. Uh, it is occupied, heavily occupied with things that don't believe like you. I'll get back there, Josh. Sure. Things that don't see like you. They don't look like you. They have different beliefs and value systems. Their cultures are different. But I've ordained it from you. Yeah. God don't call you to serve the same. Anyway, and, <laughs> and, 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 and but, but, but I've sent an angel before you now. Here's what God does. Before the nation walks in to scream Canaan, well, I said scream it, Betty. Before he walks, or, or before he allows the infant nation to go into Canaan, uh, what he does is he gives them a saw for their anxiety. Come on. He gives them a, a, a medicine for their fear. He lets them know before you take one step, God of Zion, before you get one map before you google it and see how late, long the traffic is going to be I've sent an angel before you what he was saying is don't worry walk don't worry worship just start walking because what you can't do I've already sent an angel I'm, I'm climbing there well you can't see I've sent an angel a guide as it were to lead you through this place and to guide you in the way that she should go but here is my problem here we'll share. my problem is he says that Canaan is prepared. Come on, if you open up, this word will hit you. Canaan is prepared. God is not working on it. Yeah. Oh, you, you missed it. We can shout later, but I just told you, God ain't working on Canaan. Canaan was done before you said happy birthday. You was blowing out your candles and God had it set up. But the problem is, sometimes God will send an unprepared people to a prepared place. It's prepared. You're not. I can't get help. I said it's ready, but you're not. And you're discouraged because you don't think it's ready, but it's a deflection. The promise is ready. The people ain't. The promise is ready. The people ain't. The promise is decked out and heavily endowed, but the people are still living feeble. They don't know how to behave in this place. And what do you do when God talks to you about a prepared place? Preach, Negro. And he gives you dreams of a prepared place, visions of a prepared place, a love for a prepared place, and you don't feel ready. Yeah. The problem is not that it's not ready. You're not you're not ready for the realm God called you to. If you preach out, if you scream back out, shut up. You're not as mature as you need to be for the levels of responsibility God has assigned to you. Woo, why do I feel a chill in here? In the name of Jesus, I curse your fear of responsibility. You just want to worry about you, yourself, and no more. The devil's a liar. And so is his mother. I feel a chill. Hello? Y'all scared of responsibility. You want to know why? Your mama and daddy groom you to perform. You've been living your life like a circus. You only get a hug when you do right. You only get a, a birthday present on your birthday. You don't get celebrated for just being you. I want you to know you're going into a season of celebration for no reason. God's going to send you people that's going to clap, clap for you when you fall. Clap for you when you rise. You're not going to have to earn celebration. Who am I talking? 
came to in this Anglican church. We're going to love you just because you're you. We're going to celebrate you just because you're you. I'm going to serve it to you for no reason. We just want to come out of performance so we can work in our purpose. Nobody. Nobody, nobody walks in purpose while they're performing. Be seated. You've got to stop performing. If you want to see your purpose. Mm. God didn't want the nation tormented. Go with me, Zion. He didn't want their promise to scare them. Eskotos. He didn't want what they saw about their future to be the basis of their condemnation. He didn't want all the visions and dreams and encounters that would validate and uh, emboss and uh, confirm what he was doing for the nation. He did. Anybody in here ever been tormented by their call? Come on. Come on. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. God shows it to you. You're like, mm. 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 If it is that it ain't now, come on, help me. Wait till I get married, then I'll do it. Wait till I have kids, then I'll do it. Let me finish this doctrine. Oh, you won't help me? I don't care. Let's bust the devil's head over to the white me. God, I know this is your purpose, but this is my plan. God, I know you called me to this, but I'm busy being occupied right now. Hit me back late. I feel a chill. Let me get myself ready. But the problem with that is when you erect in your heart a calendar, a schedule, an agenda that defies the plan of God, God treats it like an idol. Yeah, your resume can be one, preach Negro. Your status can be one. Your income can be one. You, you think all idols are fat Buddha shops in a nail, but your mentality can be an idol. Pleasing your mama can be an idol. Confronting your enemies can be an idol. You, uh, it's not until you surrender to the last thing God said to you that you qualify for Canaan. 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 Now, I have another point that I'm going to make, but I feel led now by the power of God to say this. <sighs> Help me, Spirit of God. Now, I want favor in this city, so don't get too mad. I want to be in the mayor's office, and I want to go to the interfaith gatherings and all of that. I want to be in civic duties and all of that. I want to serve the, the athletic teams and all of that. But one of the things I don't like about this city <sighs> is the professional bootlegging. I'm a prophet, let me stay in my office. New York knows how to counterfeit everything. Oh yeah, I said that. When you walk up and down the city and you put Gucci against Gucci. Help me preach now, they're getting quiet. Don't you dare lock up. You know what, you got it on now. That's why you ashamed. You don't want to say man, cause folk gonna look at your maroon bottoms. That ain't red, come on, put those hands to working in here we know how to fake it we know how to make it similar but God is looking for the real the real the real the real the real he's looking for the real we ain't seen it in quite some time we don't want a cubic zirconia call it we will now come on I only got a little while I want to know how many of you settle for a counterfeit I'm trying to teach you how to be increased. I want to know how many of you settle for what looks like it, even though it was not it. Some of you right now are going through a divorce because it was a similar thing, but it wasn't a real thing. And I want to call you right now by the Lamb's agenda out of the assignment of the counterfeit. You can't customize God's will for you. Come on and open yourself up. If you settle for a counterfeit, you're going to abort your calling. You try to be happy outside of the call of God. I don't care how many comedy shows you go to. Put my weight on it, Holy Ghost. You will never laugh for real with the counterfeit. You'll never get out of depression while you're living in the counterfeit. And the counterfeit can be customized by somebody who has not learned to trust the one that called them. Back to my message. A prepared place. It's ready, but you ain't. Say preach. Preach. No, a little bit more volume. Say preach. preach. In the 60s and the 70s, there you go. my grandfather traveled with the temptations. Real story. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the spinners. He was one of the pips behind Gladys Knight. He traveled. And um, what we would call a perm today, they called it something else. You know, we would have banter and talk about it. You know, in the 70s, 60s, you just wore what you want to wear. We were talking about it today. There are no fashion rules. You know, when I was coming up, stuff at least had to match. Not so. Right. You can go to any local thrift store, buy you some baggy whatevers, and wear it, and it'd be cool. All you need is a line, and come on, we break the rules. My grandfather wore something, and you know what he called it? A process. <laughs> a process. I'm going to take my time, because you won't say amen. A process. And, 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 and we would call it Duke. <laughs> Sporting ways in high school, I was one of those oh, uh, black people that would brush the stew out my hair. I mean, until I bled, because I wanted them waves, you know? You would have the do-rag so tight that it looked like somebody stabbed you with a butter knife and drew a line. You won't say, man, I was at the locker, just a brushing, just a brushing, just a brushing. Sporting wave and do. Couldn't tell me nothing. But they called it a process. They called it a process. Watch this. If you define it by scientific explanation, it was the application of a chemical compound, watch me, or a substance, I'm creeping now, whose job was to alter the molecular structure of whatever it was applied to. A process was something that was put on another thing, and when it was put, I love your word, on that thing, that thing started to change molecularly. Not aesthetically, go home and study, but molecularly. Some of you change on the outside. I don't care how much you dye your hair, if that DNA has not been manufactured in such a way where it can handle your identity, you not change, you modified. You not transform, you had a makeover. I wish I had a preacher in here that would scream, change me. Open your mouth, change me. We shall not all sleep. But in one moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. You made that about the rapture. God was saying it was a way of life. Don't trust people that don't want to change. Don't marry somebody that cannot change. 100% of divorces occur in America because one or more parties don't want to change. Stubbornness is idolatry. Stop bragging about it. Stubbornness is witchcraft. Stop thinking that it's cute. You got to be a changing man, a changing woman, a changing family. You are <laughs> oh, yeah. A process meant that something had to change. Be seated, it's rude to stand when people are talking. <laughs> this process, let me take my time, would kill the strength of what it was applied to. Yeah. Mm. A process would be put on hair or anything that could grow, watch me, and kill it. It's quiet, and kill it. A process was supposed to kill it to make it more manageable until it showed no signs of resistance. You got an afro and you put a process on it. You can't put an afro in a real ponytail, but if you process it, it's been killed, it's dead now. So you can style it, you can manage it, you can arrange it in such a way your problem is you want your destiny without death. I'm preaching better than what you say. You want to be everything that you are and show you. And do you was the greatest thing that they could have taught you because it's stupid. You can't do you and be like him. So the problem is God is calling a generation back to death. Y'all don't like that type of preaching. You like dancing, don't want to die. You want to be a part of the team and don't want to die. You want VIP treatment and don't want to die. But is there anybody in here that's like this is a death process? I already know my crazy. I already know my iniquity. I am fully aware of what, what I would do when the lights were off if nobody were looking. On a bad day, I don't trust my flesh. In me, there is no good thing. Process me. 
I'm getting there now. That felt real good. Process me. Mm. Don't reveal my purpose until I've embraced your process. Process it now. I want you to kill everything that's showing signs of resistance. Process me. I want my mentality to change. I don't want to just be a good American. I want to live in my purpose. Process me. Pull me out of the toxicity of this culture. Process me. Take me out of the definitions of manhood that was projected on me. Process me. Take me out of the pressures of femininity in a culture that's dedicated to masculinizing their women. Process me. I want to be processed before I get married. Process before I get engaged. Talk back now. Process before you give me my career. Because if you don't process me, I'm going to mess up what you promised me. Process me. I'm not fighting it no more. I'm enrolling with everything in me. Sit down. Yay! He was about to process Israel. Come on, preach. He was about to, and, 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 and the problem with this word is we've over preached it so much without depth. The word process has become a despised term because it's an easy preach. But I'm here to crack open the deeper meaning of the thing. Every book in the Bible shows a procedure of God. A different process. You won't be able to avoid it. All 66 books, you find God processing men, <laughs> processing women, processing entire nations. Why do you think, uh, let me choose my words. The last regime that ran over this nation was allowed by God. If my Bible is true, all leadership is allowed by God. And I'm not saying uh, that you have to agree with the policies if you get my drift. I'm saying God will allow anything to start a process. <laughs> he will allow the wicked to rule if it means a process can start. He will allow for injustice to occur if it means a process can start. If you trust God, you have to know that everything that happens happens with his allowance, but he catalyzes a process. It's not an attack, it's a process. It's not a conspiracy, God is processing you. Come on, you're quiet, and when you get quiet, I have to hit you like a ram. The word of God is a hammer, and I'm coming up against that thing in you that's resisting what God wants to do in you. I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to what's in you. God is igniting a process in your life to break down the fear, the hesitation, the rebellion. And for some of you, and I don't want to go here, it's just flat out witchcraft. The word curses, the things that people decreed over you, the things that people said about you, word woundings, and those labels and stigmas that are come against you. Can we do it for a minute? In the name of Jesus, buckets and buckets and buckets of the blood against every step, yo, every stamp, every stigma, every binding, the barcodes on you, the price tags on you, be burned with fire, blood, vapor, and smoke. No word curse will take my destiny. If you believe it, scream hallelujah. hallelujah. Sit down. Let's deal with this. Yeah, let's deal with it. We preach process so much that it's distasteful. But it doesn't matter where you go in the Bible. The majority of life is about process. Now let's get ready to shout. I'm going to move through this. Process, therefore, I'm in my text, as seen in our text, comes with the conditions. When God starts highlighting conditions, you can do that, but you can't do this. Ooh, I'm going to get there in a minute. Um, um, they are allowed to do that. The wicked will prosper in front of your face. Ooh, and it will be God's doing to see how you can handle watching a wicked man or a wicked woman walk in what looks like your promise. The issue is not their wealth, it's your wisdom. He wants to know how you're going to posture yourself when you think somebody's walking in your stuff. Who am I talking to in this Anglican church? If you will be real, I've looked at some people that was hoeing, smoking, dope dealing, snorting, running all around the church, and it looked like they was walking in everything God promised me. I can't even cuss good without being convicted by the Holy Ghost. But it's just my process. It's just my pro God will process everyone differently. He will, he will see how you position yourself. But let's get ready to give you three points and then we're going to go and move through this. Are you ready? Scream open up. Number one, if you. If you, come on, I'm going to make this rich in a minute. I like my gravy thick. Uh, if you are in a process, 
our, 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 our text shows that process is the sole access point. It will make sense in a minute. Yes, the sole access point to provision. If I'm not in a process, or if I reject a process, I have also rejected my provision. Because provision, watch me, is not assigned to a person. It's assigned to a process. God sends your provision to your process. And if you're not found where God told you to be, good golly, Miss Molly, then your provision will be there even when you're not. Say, put your weight on it. He told Elijah, go and you sit your inn by that brook. If Elijah would have decided to go to Starbucks or stop by Walgreens or hit Walmart, it's a sneak attack. What would have happened is God would have sent his provision to the place. But if the person wasn't in the place, then th those ravens wouldn't know where to go. I want you to know your provision exists, exists, but you're just out of place. It's a dangerous thing, a dangerous thing to not to be found where God told you to be. You're claiming something that's already there, but when the brook dries up, so does the provision. Get where God told you to be. Provision, I'm almost here. Provision, come on, sojourn, traveling shoes, provision. As long as you embrace your process, you'll need nothing. Mm. As long as you embrace your process, come on, open your belly. You won't have lack. God will make sure that you got what you need when you need it. If you ain't got it now, it's because God know you don't need it now. Your problem is you're spoiled and you treat God like a genie in a bottle. You think God is big mama and has to give you everything that you need. No, but God respects your process so much so that he situates what he wants for you in the terms of provision by the place he called you to. Yes, sir. Say number two. You're losing your amen. Come on, say number two. A promise. Whew. A promise, Desi. Do you know that one of the most important things you can use to fight the devil, come in Israel, is a promise. Before they knew how to bind and loose, they knew how to rehearse the promise. Your problem is you're spending too much quality time with the devil. You go and pray and say, hi God, now Satan, I bind you. A, a more efficient way to approach it is, you go and pray and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I love you. You're so sweet to me. You've been better to me than I could ever be to myself. My grandmama said I was young, but now I am old. And I never seen the righteous he feeds me in green pastures he makes sure that when I'm hungry he feeds me when I'm thirsty he gives me water he makes sure that I've got everything I need and so the way you fight the devil you ain't even gonna talk to that ninja for real sure do some binding and loosing on occasion but you know what makes him most mad is when you talk about the promises of God and the reason that makes him mad is because he's a liar I wish I had somebody in here that still believes the devil is a liar and what you do to a liar is uh, you confront them with the truth uh, I gotta say I bind you I break you I, I, I loose your jaws all I got to say is say God you said in your word uh, that no good thing will you withhold uh, if I walk up right before I got a promise shut up devil uh, I got a promise uh, I got a fight the devil with the promise Fight the devil with the promise. Fight the devil with the promise. What did God say? When you know what God said, it don't matter what they say. I've got a promise and your problem is you let go of the promise. Be seated. But if you embrace your personal process, then you have immediate access into the promise. Here's why. What God uses his promises to do is fuel you for the process. You will stay in the process as long as you remember the promise. People come out of process because they forget the promise. Yeah. This is the most powerful weapon. Who am I talking to? Against sabotage. Now, here is the greatest one. We're going to go through this. I got 17 minutes and that's dangerous. Purpose. I don't know who I am. Israel had an identity crisis. Because every time God gave them a condition, scream preach. Scream, preach. They would compare their conditions to that of the other nations. Mm -hmm. Comparison, Josh, is an identity attack. You find more value in other people and their individuality and or uniqueness. And their exemptions and exceptions. And you see it as a personal attack to you. Your uniqueness threatens me. 
your difference threatens me. This is why Israel wanted to be like the other nations, because it seemed like their conditions were easier. The problem is you're studying an assignment that's not yours. You will never know your purpose if you reject your process. You want God to reveal to you your calling, but you're not mature enough to matriculate through your process. Purpose is revealed one step at a time as you embrace your process. God is processing me for the place he's prepared for me. Now, here is a warning, and we're going to go through this line upon line. The tricky thing, Desmond, hey, about process is you cannot be indifferent toward it. Sit in it. You cannot be knowledgeable of it and be okay. You can't just say, I know God is trying to teach me this, but I know God is trying to grow this in me, however. I know many of us are content with our knowledge of it, but we've not enrolled in it. Oh, yeah. When the grease is hot enough, the chicken will fry. The problem is you've not learned to love your process. Yeah, I'll plow there. You've got to love it. Yeah, you've got to love it. But it hurts. You've got to love it. But it's taking too long. You've got, yeah, I'm working. You've you got to love it. Until you learn to love your process, you will annually be ejected by it. Because your process is not loyal to you. God, I love your word. Your process is a direct mandate and classroom and atmosphere and environment of an active academic nature that was ordained by God for you. Your process is God's idea whether you like it or not. But until you learn to love it, it will turn on you. God has many of you in a process uh, yeah, 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 with no anesthesia. God has you in a process and he wants you to feel every ounce of pain. You should have said amen. Now I'm going to work now. He wants you to feel the consequence of that breakup. He wants you to feel the nagging pain of that rejection. If you're asking me why, it's because it's God wants you to remember how much it hurt so you don't ever be tempted to return back to dog's vomit and become who you used to be and want what you used to want. No, I'm not giving I'm giving you a Tylenol. I'm giving you a test. I'm not giving you an aspirin. I want you to have authority. I want you to feel every ounce of this process. Process. I tell you, they may process. Edreda, Nalaha, the Ban Marto, Hoseka, the Del Del Baba, Matala, Bambria, Sadara, Parabara, Breha, Mahava, Bedo, process. Oh, yeah, process. Now, this is why praise and worship is important. Oh, my God, praise and worship is important because it keeps you in process. I know some of you dance because you like dancing, but some of us are just dancing because we need to survive. God, I'm in a process. You've been processing me, and I'm going to praise you while you process me. I'm going to worship you while you process me because I cannot afford in this season of my life to go through the hill I've been in and stop right here. I'm all in. Take me in this process. I might as well go with God. Everybody else turned on me. I'm in my process. I'm in my process. I'm in my process. I think I deserve more, but I'm in my process. I think I earned it before, but I'm in my process. This scene, this schematic looks very familiar. But if this is what you want from me, I'll go here until I'm ready for what you prepared. You have to love it. You have to love it. Come on. Look at somebody say, I'm learning to love it. No, 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 no. Come on, say it with your heart. I'm learning to love it. I'm learning to love it. And I can love it and not like it, but I'm learning to love it. I, I can love it. I can love it. I, I, even if I have to convince myself, I'm learning to love it. Okay, God, if you're going to use this sibling rivalry, I love my process. If you're going to use this strife between me and my mama, I love my process. If you're going to use my Jezebelic boss, I'm learning to love my process. Forgive me for complaining. Forgive me for being a nag. Forgive me for envying somebody else's process. If you are in a process, lift your hands and scream, I'm in a process. Now, here's the problem. Come on, let's do some fun work. The nation was entering into a process. Sid, I promise you will shout. The nation was in a process that they didn't know they needed. 
Don't make the mistake of thinking you are aware of every area in your life that needs to be processed. There are some things in your life that you are unaware that defies your destiny. Do you realize God don't necessarily like everything about you? Some of you don't have the authority you should because of a bad attitude. And what you don't know is God is trying to groom you in decorum because you will serve princes. But you can't serve princes with your neck like that. Process. I don't care if he says wake up at five. It's a part of your process. God is not just trying to get you to lose weight. He's trying to get you to obey and obey quickly. Process. It's the love of God that processes men. Anyway, you must learn to love it. You can't be indifferent about it. You've got to love it. Let's do some work. Say, I hear you. Now, we're dealing with something very tricky. In the process of Israel, God was dealing with their mismanagement of passion. I'm going to give you this verse by verse. Mismanagement of passion. Mismanagement of passion. If the enemy can get a hold to your passions, he can steer every decision you make. Process, therefore, is the only way to align your passions. Do you think God is the only one that want to use you? No, Negro. If you were called to be prophetic under the kingdom of heaven, Satan has just as much vested interest in those skills and those abilities and in those proclivities that come with who God made you to be. He will use you to be a recruiter for his plan. So process aligns your passion. Can I preach now? It's a dangerous thing, Josh, to be passionate about the wrong thing. Yeah. And many of us don't know what to do with our passions, just like Israel, and so we turn to idolatry. If you're going to possess it, this verse tells us that we've got to go in preparing to not be passive. I'm going to let you sit in that. Possession requires the divorcement of passivity. Oh yeah, I can hear the crickets now. You might be aggressive in your demeanor, but you're passive in your decision making. Mm -hmm. You want to go in Canaan and make friends with the altars that are there. You want to go in Canaan and ignore the altars that are there. But God confronted the passivity of the nations. He said, utterly tear them down. When you go in there, you like, I know you live here, but it's mine. I know you took residence here, but it's mine. I know you've got society and civilization and you've got industry here. But devil, all of this stuff is mine. The, the only reason God allowed you to exist here to begin with was to manage my stuff. Can I give you a word from the Lord? Will you shout with me if I allow you? There is a heathen somewhere working on your empire. Somebody you ain't never met. You won't shout with me, so I'll go here. You think you're behind. No, you got employees you do not know. There are monsters somewhere building up stuff for you. The wealth of the wicked is laid, 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 laid up for the righteous. God is waiting for you to get ready for the riches that belong to you. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to the conditions. Can you handle this? Verse 21. This is enough time. Obey this angel. The word theophany is a theological term that means a manifest appearance of God in another form. Jesus was the cloud by day. Jesus was the burning bush. Jesus was Noah's ark. Jesus was the cleft of the rock. Jesus was the ark of the covenant. It was him all the time. Jesus was the fourth man in the fire. He did not show up in the book of Matthew. How dumb is that? You think he showed up when the letters turned red? No. The Bible said Jacob wrestled with a man. And the man said, I am God. Come on, he was there all the time. You think that he just got there when Mary got there? No. He couldn't wait to get his love upon you. To turn his affection to you. So he showed up. Prove it. Don't take my word for it. He was in the Old Testament the whole time. He was there the entire time. And so, listen, he shows up now in the form of an angel. Oh, no, nah, my bishop didn't say that. I don't give a nickels worth of what your bishop said. Because the hardest thing to do when learning is to unlearn. 
I gotta detox you to show you the deeper mystery. Jesus showed up. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus showed up. He showed up as, and I know it was Jesus, Glenn, because here's what God said. Obey him because my name. Watch your voice. Yeah, calm down now. My name is in him. My name. Now, no other angel in the Bible, God said that about, but he said about this angel, my name is in him. Obey him. <laughs> my name is in him. It had to be Jesus. Now, clearly, this is not a normal angelic manifestation. Uh, what he's do doing is teaching him to learn from this angelic manifestation because God is more concerned about what you will do when he takes you to where he's called you to. It's not just about arrival, it's about behavior. Now in verse 22, he shows this. He says, if you obey this angel, come on, let's go, don't get weary. If you obey this angel, he has my name in him. He's going to guide you. Verse 22 says, I will be an enemy to your enemies. Ask me why. Because in pursuit of your place, the easiest distraction is who's against you. Open yourself and receive. It's easy to invest in mental, emotional, and intellectual into, uh, uh, energy and aptitude in your enemies. You will neglect those that, that are clapping to study those who ain't. Right. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. You won't allow the applause of those that love you to push you because you're so distracted about Linda and Larry and the fact that you let them borrow money and where they at now and the fact that you were there when somebody died and where they at now. But how many of us are willing, willing to say God needs to deliver us from giving attention to our adversaries? Yes, Lord. Watch me. This could get dangerous. I'm about to give you a statement to say that will revolutionize your life if you fan yourself and drink some water and get unhot. <laughs> I will be an enemy to your enemies. Yeah. This means, watch me, watch me. As long as you are in process, you will have, if this is for you, scream crazy, no successful enemies. I wish I had a church here. I ain't got enemies. They're his. If you fight me, you're fighting him. He's an enemy to my enemies. I have no successful enemies. As long as I'm obeying God, I have no successful enemies. Will you slap your neighbor and say no successful enemies? They didn't believe you. Slap somebody else and say no successful enemies. Say it to your heart believes that no successful enemies. Say it to your fears here that no successful enemies. Not one successful enemy. I ain't got one successful enemy. I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to respond to it. I'm not going to retaliate. No. Come on, slap somebody say you have no successful enemies. Slap somebody else say no successful. Hey, glory to God. Praise goes right there. No successful enemy. No success. I'm going to go there by no successful. I have no successful enemy. I don't care what they say, what they post, no successful enemy. The Lord bankrupt the plan of the devil. The Lord bankrupt the weapon. No successful. Slap your neighbor, say none, 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 none. Have a seat. I used to have enemies. I ain't got none no more. I entered a process and the Lord made them under my feet. No sir. Sit down. Sit, 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 sit. Sit down. 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 Not one. Okay. Sit down. Verse 23. Verse 23. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Let me get through it, y'all. Ah, I have no successful enemies. What's your response? No successful enemies. 
What's your official statement? No successful enemy. You're not going to distract me no more. Your issues with me are your problem. God said he would be an enemy to my enemies. He would be an adversary to those that oppose me. My enemies are the business of God. The business of God. But I have no respect for me. Okay, go ahead. Stop. Be seated. I got to get through this. The angel of the Lord. This is verse 23. Hey. The angel of the Lord will bring you to the inhabitants. The Hittites. Come on, y'all. Sit down. The Jebusites. The Canaanites. He's going to deliver you from the ites. The Lord knows how to bring you. Come on, y'all. Into different audiences. Where you're going next in process is going to be in front of really different people. So the angel of the Lord will be there. Verse 24 says, throw down them pillars. If I take care of your enemies, you got to take care of their altars. Whatever they erected there to remind you of your past. Remind you of your hedonism. Remind you of your rebellion. Once you come into promise, you got to go full speed ahead. Now, come on. We're almost done. Verse 25, just so you don't say I didn't stay in my text. When you stay in your process, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. Verse 25 says that here's what's going to condition you. If you stay, Israel, and go to Canaan the way I want you to, come on, don't scream, Matthew Lewis Stevenson III. Verse 25 says, I will bless. Now I got to go down and tell you what he's going to bless. But I get excited at those three words. If you stay in your process, I will bless. If you obey my angel, even the son of man, I will bless. Let them talk, but I will bless. Let them guess, but I will bless. And no man can curse the thing that I bless. Will you hit three people on your neighbor and say, he's blessed me, he's blessed me. Oh, I need a prophetic people in this house. This is not an Anglican church. The words we speak are spirit and life. Hit your neighbor and say, I will bless. Okay, if you can't find a neighbor, find an enemy. Say, I will bless. I will bless. Come on. Open your spirit, man, and receive it. I will bless. If you think I did it for Jabez, if you think I did it for Abraham, I'm going to do it for you. I'll bless your bread and your water. I'll take sickness from among you. I'll make sure that you don't miscarry. Get ready to be more productive. Your process is making you produce. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Listen. This, this, this. Take me down a half step now. He says, I will bless. I'm going to bless your bread and your water. I'll take sickness, watch me, from among you. He didn't say it wouldn't come. He said, I'll take it from among you, which means that he'll allow it to arrive and then he'll do something about it. And the reason he'll do something about it is because healing is easy. Testimony is hard. I don't want to just have you healed. I want you talking the talk. I want you telling people that I am Rafa. And there is no God that moves disease like me. I am Rafa. I've got authority over cancer. I am Rafa. I can heal HIV. There is no such thing as uncurable in the courts of heaven. I don't care what that clinic said. I don't care what that doctor said. I am Rafa. I allowed it to kill it. I allowed it to publish it. I allowed it so you can tell generations that God healed. God delivers. God heals. 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 God delivers. I wish I had somebody with the Holy Ghost. Oh, they don't believe that no more. They drinking coffee, eating cookies. They got on the skinny jeans, uh, but we believe God heals. We believe God heals. We believe God heals. Uh, we believe God delivers. God delivers. Oh, don't let the lights fool you. 
Don't let the clothes fool you. Don't let the false move you. We are those that bind the devil. And we cast them out. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon. And you will be my witness. Oh yeah, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm trying to get it. I'm one of them. I dress well, but I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I got tattoos, but I'm one of them. I speak with tongues. I have dreams and visions. I break curses. Cast out devils. Roll in the floor until the taste is out of your mouth. Crack cocaine. Crack cocaine. Crystal meth. Pills. Uppers and downers. Come on, Zion. He breaks addiction. He breaks addiction. I said, God heals. I'm under arrest. God heals. God heals. God delivers. He said, now, the condition, you're going to eat this. Th these are things and promises that can only be claimed by those that stay in process. If you don't follow, you have no rights to these promises. None, come on, we almost there. None uh, shall miscarry. This is what I'm doing for my people. Because I gotta teach them how to act in Canaan. I gotta give them behavioral rules for Canaan. So to make sure that they're not discouraged, I'm gonna do something to their womb to make sure that when they conceive, they bring forth. Mm. That when I put it in their belly, that they will not miscarry. Because I want them to get used to producing. When you look at somebody in their eyes and say, get used to producing. You're going from idea to manifestation. From concept to reality. It's going from paper to your desk. Get ready to produce. No longer will the enemy come and make you abort. You're not going to get depressed and abort. You're not going to get suicidal and abort. You're not going to let discouragement make you abort. Carry Carry, carry, full turn. Come on, Mary. Come in, Elizabeth. I want to carry in this house. God put it in me, and now I'm pushing. Uh, God put it in me. The timing was wrong, uh, but I stayed in my process. Stayed in my process, and I'm ready to push uh, when Zion travail. When Zion travail. When Zion travail. When Zion travails, uh, 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 she brings forth, uh, she brings forth, uh, she brings out, uh, she pushes all the way, uh, she pushes all the way, uh, come on, hold your neighbor's head uh, and say, no more miscarriage. Oh, I can't hear you now. No more miscarriage. No more miscarriage. Come on, let's go, Zion. No more miscarriage. I know you think it's too late. I know you got a diagnosis. I know you got a death decree. No more miscarriage. If it's God's baby, it don't belong to Joseph. If it's God's baby, it don't belong to Joseph. Flesh and blood had nothing to do with this. God put it in me. 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 Shall I cause you to bring forth? Shall I bring you to the labor room? And you not bring forth. Uh, you went through hell to push. Went through pain to push. Went through doubt to push. I'm not bringing you to the labor room to leave you here. Travail, that's the name of your process. Travail, that's the name of your test. Travail, that's the reason for the attack. Travail, bring it on out. The nation needs it. The generation needs it. Your family needs it. Last name needs it. Travail now. All right. One more. One more. Ah. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, you're gonna miss my sermon. Now, final condition. Final condition. Verse 29 gives us, listen to me. We'll shout it a minute. What will you do? While you're in process, here is my message. I've got to attach it to its title. I will not 
drive them out in a year. What do you do? How do you respond? How do you behave when God says what he will not do? I'm going to go over here. I lost my preaching segment. Shouting ja, about what God will do. Yeah. Easy. God said he would. God is going to. But there is a sign of God in your process where God will tell you what he is not going to do. I want to know who loves them that much that they'll still shout when he says, I'm not doing that. They'll still praise when he says, I'm not doing it in a year. You can claim divine acceleration all you want, but because I know what's best for you, I'm not going to do it over a year. Watch me. And here's why. I will drive out your enemies, your oppositions, your obstacles. I'll drive them out little by little. A big God sometimes heals you by doing a little thing. Your problem is you're stuck because you disrespect his little. God, I wish I had help. God is moving in your life right now. It doesn't look like what you want it to look like, but he's doing it little by little. And the reason, now here's my message. The reason he's doing it little by little you ready to shout through here? It's because if I get rid of all your enemies, adversaries, I clear them out in a year, you won't produce at the rate of the beasts. I, I, I want you to spend quality time reproducing and getting bigger than the beasts. Because there are beasts in the land I called you to. And while you're growing, they're producing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stagger your growth. I'm going to give it to you little by little. So that you get bigger than the beasts. And the way to get bigger than the beasts is you've got to increase. So the message, the summation, the conclude is there are certain things that will not leave your life until you're bigger. You must increase. You got to do it as an act of your will. You got to get busy being bigger. And if you don't, the beasts will multiply against you until you are increased. These conditions mean nothing. These conversations mean nothing. Not, these warnings mean nothing because there are beasts that are waiting on you to get feeble. Beasts. I know you don't appreciate that, and maybe I'll do a part two called Beasts. Because there are those of you that fight people. There are others of us that have been wrestling with wild beasts. Yeah. Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, when I was at Ephesus, yeah. I fought wild beasts. Yeah. Mm. Samson, come here. You're on your way to a different dimension of strength. Say, put your weight on it. You're grieving one wife and you're on your way to another trap. And on your way to your fam family's house, you're worried about how they're going to eat because some of us are winning for the family. You don't want to admit it, but you're the one. You're the choke. God has put something on you to provide for those that cause you pain. You're not ready for that lesson yet. Mm -hmm. Ask Joseph if you don't believe me. That's the way God proves his point. He'll prosper you to do things for those that hated you. Come here, Samson. No, I can't come right now, Dr. Stevenson. Listen. Mm -hmm. I see a carcass. I see a lion. Somebody somewhere scream beasts. Somebody somewhere killed this lion. But my family needs to eat. Watch me. So I'm a man of strength. I'm going to put my hand inside the carcass and I'm going to pull out a honeycomb. Mm. Something sweet is going to come out of this. I don't want to preach it. I said something sweet is going to come out of this. Something sweet. He pulls provision out of the war. Makes his family eat. Say prove it. Open your mouth. Say prove it. When you are anointed, you are assigned to some beasts. But more importantly, there will be beasts assigned to you. 
And your warfare weapon has to be a deliberate choice to increase. I will increase because there are beasts here. I'm going to give you another example of a man that wrestled with beasts. Come here, David. The oil ain't on you yet. You're not king yet. You're rejected by Jesse. Jesse's a liar. I don't even know where your mama at. You got severe generations of dysfunction. Brothers don't like you, but I've chosen you. So here's how I'm going to train you. Say, put your weight on it. Open your mouth. Say, put your weight on it. I'm not going to train you with fighting flesh. Because you could have stole off of Benadam. You could have hit your brother in the jaw. I'm going to train you with beasts. Because for the rest of your life, you will be fighting monstrosities that are assigned to the monarchy. There are things that are assigned to the throne. I want you to learn now. So he comes. Before the giants, there was a beast. Uh, hey, Goliath, come on, let's go. Goliath's out there. He's tormenting everybody. I'll kill you. Send your best warrior. Send your best warrior. And I'll kill him. I'll torment him. Is there anybody that wants to fight? Mm -mm, we don't want no smoke. <laughs> David says, hey. Oh, yeah, we're about to shout in a minute. Hey there. I'll do it. Watch me. It's my turn. Now, you don't understand that because you ain't volunteered for something in a long time. And the reason why you ain't volunteered to obey the assignment is because you, you opted out of your process. If you stay in your process, you know that God has developed a skill set for monsters in you. You see, Goliath is easy because the other day I saw a bear and I saw a lion and I didn't have a gun. Come on, let's go. I didn't have a rifle. Let's go. I didn't have a sword. You know what I had? My bear hat. I want somebody in here that knows that they're getting ready for Canaan, uh, getting ready for the promise. Uh, look, put your hand in front of your face and say, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'll kill it with my bare hands. I'll kill it with my bare hands. I'll rip the head off of it. Come on, let's go warfare. I'll tear the head off of it. I don't need an earthly weapon. I don't need an earthly weapon. I don't need an earthly weapon. Uh, he teaches my hands to war and my fingers to do battle. You got everything you need. Talk to your hands. I'll kill the lion. I'll kill the tiger. I'll kill the bear. And when I'm done with the bear, I'm coming after the giants. When I'm done with the bear, I'm coming after the monsters. When I'm done with the bear, I'm coming after the lapel. I don't need a weapon. I'll do it with my bare hands. I'll do it with my bare hands. I'll do it with my bare hands. You can do more with your bare hands than the enemy can do with the most sophisticated weapon against you. He's anointing my hands. You gotta go get a gun. I can do it with my hands. You need a spear. You come to me with spear and javelin. But I come to you hey, in the name of the Lord. I come to you uh, in the name of the Lord. Behold, I'm done. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents, say beasts and scorpions. Everything that's occupying your Canaan, God has already taught you. Now listen, this is a good place to praise him. Hey, gorgeous. I'm about to tell you something as if I was in a discipleship meeting with you one-on-one -on -one at Starbucks. And I want you to respond accordingly. Y you've got a long way to go, Pooh. A lot of stuff to learn, son. But here is your security. You know stuff that you don't know you know. You're further along than what you think. The problem is when you were hurting, you didn't realize you were learning. There are several things that God taught you, but you were so busy crying that you didn't realize he was training you. That last test was school. That last rumor was school. That last attack was an upgraded certificate and how to rule in Canaan. That accusation was really a graduation. You know more than what you think you know. I want you to praise him because you're farther than what you think. You're farther than what you think. Your father than what you think. Rejection taught you. Abandonment taught you. Sabotage taught you. Rumors taught you. Neglect taught you. You got the skill for it. 
You got the skill for it. Ah, you, ah, you got the skill for it. You got the resilience for it. You got the resistance for it. It's already in you. Yes, there's another level. Yes, there's another dimension. But in your belly, in your spine, in your head, uh, you got stuff. Uh-oh, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. It's coming on in. Will you grab somebody and say, I still got it? I can't hear you. Say, I still got it. It ain't went nowhere. Oh, you're not going to church with me. I'm trying to encourage you. The devil make you think you got to get back somewhere. You're going forward. God's got it in your belly. The treasure chest of God. Abilities. Sensitivities. Proclivities. He's anointed them. He's anointed them. He's anointed. You didn't suffer for nothing. Shut your mouth, devil. I didn't waste time. I was getting tutored. I was in school. I was training. I was training. I, I want everybody in here that's been in school for Canaan over the last four years. The devil tried to depress you out of your destiny, depress you out of your purpose, disqualify you. If you're breaking out of that thing, go crazy like you ain't got no neighbor. Come on. Blow the roof off of this place. Oh, not that praise, the other one. Neighbor, I've been trying to behave all day. I've been trying to be nice all day. I wore my good clothes, but excuse me. The devil tried to kill me. Excuse me. I was on CPR, dead on arrival. He sent the ambulance, and I didn't have a post. But I remembered my purpose. You ain't shouting. All in the balcony. Everybody would have hit on your life. Everybody would have hit on your life. Everybody would have hit on your life. Jezebel tried. Delilah tried. Ahab tried. They all tried it. Noadiah tried it. False prophets tried it. Game bankers tried it. The mafia tried it. You won't go crazy. You can touch everything but my calling. You can have everything but my purpose. Come on, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, Many are they that rise against me. Many are they that say of my soul. There is no hope for him in God. But I will not be afraid of 10,000 people. I've been fighting beasts. People ain't a problem for me. I've been wrestling monsters. I ain't scared of no rumor. Shout now. Shout now. Wild beasts. Be increased. Oh, now I feel something breaking. I'm sorry, Palladium. Go to seven people right now and say, be increased. Come on. Leave your seat. Be increased. I feel the anointing. Hit somebody. Say, be increased. It's important. You must get bigger on the inside. Be increased. Oh, come on, there's a corporate anointing. There's a corporate anointing. Come on, all you gotta do is get in it. If you stay in your seat, you might miss it. Be increased. More business. More exposure. More study. More investigation. More teachers. More opportunities. I'm not acting funny. I'm busy being increased. It's a matter of life and death. If I don't get bigger, the beasts are going to get me. The beasts are going to devour the promise of God for my children. Ah, I'm busy being increased. I'm busy being increased. You always study. Nope, got to be increased. You stand in the house. Nope, I'm being increased. Why are you going to that conference? I've got to get bigger, bigger capacity, range, dimensions, depths. It's important. The beasts will not devour my purpose if you believe it go crazy I'm bigger than the beast I'm bigger than the beast what sin means more powerful than what the lion got going on the lion the tiger the bear I ain't got no help I feel like Seymour come on shout with me 
Hey, 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 hey. Hallelujah. There you go, baby. That's how you get the victory. I'm waiting on somebody to act like they were under assignment. There was an assault on your life. Tried to drive you crazy. Put schizophrenia on you. Bipolar on you. You were taking all kind of pills. Wanted to die. Wanted to kill yourself. Wanted to throw in the towel. Wanted to walk away from the church. But I remember the beast. I remember the beast. Well, yeah. I'm going to plow this open. Because I feel breakthrough. Come here, Paul. What happened? Come here, Paul. What happened to you? I was around the fire. I was at the fire. And a snake came out. I was around the fire. And it bit me. I put venom in me. But I shook it off. I shook it off. I shook it off. I could have stayed in that. But I chose to shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake it off. Get up from there. You've been there too long. Uh, 2020 is gone. Uh, shake the snake off. Uh, shake the snake off. Uh, shake the snake off. Uh, in the name of the Son of Man, uh, I command you uh, be healed from every snake bite. Uh, the python, uh, the cobra, uh, everything wrapping itself uh, around your potential, uh, around your destiny. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake. Shake it off. Shake it off. Uh, do what you got to do. Uh, get your counseling. Cry your tears. Uh, go on a vacation. Uh, but whatever you do, uh, shake that thing off. Uh, shake it off. Uh, shake it off. Uh. Woo. Oh, yeah, I'm not normal. I'm not normal. I'm not regular. I don't fight people. I wrestle beasts. I don't play with other people's children. I wrestle bear, watch me child, and surely. Where's my church people at? Surely. Somebody shout surely. Open your mouth and say surely. He will deliver you from the noisome pestilence, from the fowl of the air, from the bear and the adder, from the lion and the tiger. There is not a monster that can kill your mandate. You gotta get bigger. You gotta increase uh, so that the beasts uh, don't devour you. Shout hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Oh, I have a uh, have a group of a group of young men. We pray every morning at five. Some of my sons, they're in their early twenties. I decided that the way I wanted to disciple them was prayer. So we have a group and about five o'clock hits here and we all take, shall we go up? And I leave my house and I pray. Last week, something happened to me in prayer. We're about to, we're about to damage this room. Something happened to me and it was weird. I started to pray, EP, and I did my normal pray, prayer. The power of God for intercession and lament came upon me travail and supplication and I, I literally said this thou art been our dwelling place from before the mountains were brought forth thou only thou art God and my tongue literally got arrested and I started praying for my grandchildren listen I don't have any but I began to pray for my grandchildren now I got immediate needs immediate ministry needs but my belly turned towards people that are not here right now. I started to pray God's mind over my grandkids. The power of God hit my back and I found myself on a playground bent over, calling resources from different nations, calling cameras from different nations on my grandkids. You like that's nice, that don't make sense. No, what I taught you was, if there's a flow to Abraham, it's got to find its way to Isaac. And when it's got to get to Isaac, it's going to land on Jacob. Can I give you a prophecy? What God does in you next will last for at least three generations. Somebody in here needs to act like a plumb fool because God is already taking care of the thing that's in your loins. 
the thing that's in your loins And if it's not a natural grandchild I'm talking about three generations of blessings Three generations of favor Three generations of windows Three generations of doors Three generations of contacts Three generations of contracts Three generations of promises Come on Zion I wish somebody that would shout for Jacob Shout for Jacob Shout for Jacob Shout for Jacob If you pray for Jacob God's got to prosper you A good man A good man Leaves an inheritance For his children's children Three, 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 three I prophesy it Three generations of blessings Three decades of favor Three decades of miracles Not only will you do it Everything coming around you This is a favor zone A miracle zone If the apostle's shadow heals My shadow breaks yokes Yokes of poverty Yokes of destruction Yokes of distraction Yokes of disease All you got to do is come around me Get under it You'll dream again Get under it You'll hope again Get under it Clarity will come Get under it Get bigger There are certain things that cannot happen until you get increased. I messed it up, but the point is, God was telling Israel, you've got to populate faster than the beasts. This is why I'm going to do it slowly, because I want to give you time to reproduce. Take your time. Scripture said, obey him. Because every test in your life is either about obedience or disobedience. And for Canaan, you've got to deepen obedience. Take your time. I'm going to do it little by little. Unless the beasts multiply against you. Lift your hands now. Lift your hands now. Little by little. Do not be discouraged because this deliverance doesn't seem instant. God's glory is here. The enemy condemns people because they want instant deliverance. You want the story that I came to the altar and somebody laid hands on me and it was gone forever. But that doesn't train your behavior. It may free you for a moment. But if it happens little by little, God cultivates and grooms the skill sets you need for the place you don't even know where you're going. Can I give you a word? You have no clue where God is taking you. It is beyond your wildest dreams. Whatever you got as your highest idea for what God is going to do in your life in comparison to what he wants to do. It literally is beyond your wildest nightmare. And now that you've heard this word, you're accountable to it, and you're moving at the rate of trust. That is your speed, is trust. Canaan is calling you. It's supposed to be hard, but he's gonna do it little by little. But what if it takes 10 years, so what? It took you longer than that to get bound. You must be willing to grow old with him. And you must be willing to be delivered. Watch me. We're going to hear the screech in a minute. You must be delivered from your own deadlines. Kill your calendar. Mm-hmm. Let it hit you right there, don't. That's why you won't embrace your process. You've not learned to love it because it's taking too long. But you've got to increase. You must increase. Come on. You must increase. You're too small for where you're going. 
internally. I'm not just talking about your connections. I'm talking about your internal fortitude. God is not just anointing you to preach. He wants your psychosocial emotional self to stand under the pressures of the place he's called you to. There is a pressure that is ordained for you. You can't avoid it. Canaan, the place of the conqueror. Canaan, the place where identity is proven. I know who I am, but it took process to get me there. Lord, we keep dropping out of process. Just like Israel, we've been a whoring after whatever seemed like it would get us results quicker. We love the promise, but we don't like the way to get there. Is there another option? Come on, let me help you. Is there a quicker way? Does it have to hurt like this? Is there a drive through Can I get it instantly? Yet in the love of God, he says, no, little by little. It's not just your song, it's your skill. If you're going to conquer, I want you to learn the weaknesses of your enemy, the beasts. They know your scent, your appearance, your look, your makeup. You've got to be able to sense. Job, when something is around you or in your circle that hosts, it's not them, it's what's in them. We're going to worship. Lift your hands, close your eyes. I'm about to give you an exhortation. Somebody scream, be increased. Lift your hands. I'm about to let some words hit your heart. I asked Jesus yesterday in prayer, Lord, what hurt most? Judas or Peter? My, my man self, and, and that's why I got you lifting your hands because all of you have this. My man self, my, my historic self said, Judas, he turned on me for money. 30 pieces of silver and the Holy Spirit of God said, no. He was the son of perdition from the beginning. Listen, listen, listen. And Judas did it once. Peter was my successor. And he did the same thing Judas did three times. It was Peter that hurt me more. Jesus never asked Judas, do you love me? Jesus knew Judas' assignment. Judas' assignment, beyond just betraying the Messiah, was to do something that would expose the hearts of the rest. It was Peter that hurt most. So the way Jesus dealt with it was, he looked at Peter's immaturity and he dealt with what Peter was hosting. I'm talking to you because there may be people around, around you that you love that's hosting something. They are the house, the resident place of an agenda that's after you. You love them. You buy them birthday cards, but the thing in them is an offense to you. Jesus was on his way to fulfill his destiny. And the thing inside of Peter tried to distract him away from it. You can't die. You won't die. I won't allow it. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan. Now that's interesting because Jesus was the one that changed his name. His name was Simon. Jesus, without the permission of his parents, said, I'm going to call you Peter from now on. And now he's dealing with Peter like he's the devil. But it wasn't Peter that was the devil. It was unchecked stuff in Peter. Tests Peter didn't pass that left room for something to grow in Peter that would defy him. Best friends and schoolmates, memories, girlfriends and 
relationships that I just knew I would take to the altar in marriage deeply ingrained in my family story and yet broke my heart it left room for things to grow in Peter mm, that didn't get checked why are your hands lifted because right now you are under mandate to divorce yourself from everybody around you that's not doing the work It sounds hard. But if they're, I'm not talking about the people that could be doing the work. You've got to change proximity with people around you that are in defiance to their own process. Because what's going to happen is the devil's going to use them to justify in you why you don't have to give it your all. Everybody around you needs to be doing the work. If they're not doing the work, they will become a snare to you. If not now, in your next. Love them. Have them over for your parties and celebrate them on their birthdays. But they can't get access to Canaan. Nah, you can't go with me. And it's not just you. I don't trust my own instability, my own fear, my own inconsistency. I double dutch all the time in and out of my destiny. Therefore and thereby, if you are hosting something that's in my way, Satan get thee behind me for you are an offense unto where I'm going next lift your hands now and cry and I want you to cry out and re-enroll in your process do it oh you don't mean it everybody under the sound of my voice that opted out they didn't like the pressure didn't like the scrutiny, didn't like the judgment. Everybody that opted out, everybody that opted out, everybody that customized and approached to their purpose because it was just too much. It was just too much pressure. Oh yeah, come on, harder. Come on, come strong. I love my process. I love my process. However, you've got to increase me. There it goes. The heavens are open. The heavens are open. Whatever it takes. Oh, come on a little harder. This ain't church as usual. Whatever it takes. There you go. Break. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. 2020 came. And it was too much on the soul. It was too much on the soul. I didn't know how to deal with it. Didn't know who to talk to. All my confidence went away. My confidants were not available. God deal with my soul. Oh my soul. Come on harder y'all, this is individual. I re-enroll in my process. Hey, that's it right there, that's it. Almost jump in the river, y'all. Oh yeah, Father, I was frustrated with you. Ah, I was mad with you. I hated your preference. Church people broke me. They lied. I love you. I don't like them. But now I'm re-enrolling. I'm re-enrolling. Canaan is calling. Oh y'all, come on, you're not going hard enough. You have no time to waste. You've wasted enough time. Don't let your questions get in the way. Your fears get in the way. Oh, your deadlines should get in the way. Move it. Move it. Utterly. Tear their idols down. Tear their altars down. Tear them down. Tear them down. The idols of man pleasing. The idols of lust. The idols of addiction. The idols of confusion. Come on, tear down. Tear down now. No. Every stigma. Every stigma. Every stigma. Every stigma. Every stigma. I want to hear you shout all over this room.
of eight. You've been in school for years. I wish you would get grateful. You ain't just enrolled today. He was teaching you in preschool. He was teaching you in kindergarten. Come on. You weren't just in natural school. Heaven had a training track. Heaven had a cohort. He was using everything around you. Every factor, every statistic, every detail. It matters. We're done. Eternal moments. I don't know if you feel this, but you just left time now. You just left time now. Come on, you just left time. You're in eternity. Moments. Moments. Don't see your destiny in light of a trend or a fad or a culture. This is a long-term plan. <laughs> not going to happen by might cry baby it won't be by power it will be by his spirit come on sit in it traveling shoes let's move now he's been teaching you if you feel what the Holy Ghost he's been teaching you he's been teaching you some of you have been in advanced training. But he's been teaching you. You're not as far behind as you think. There is a set of skills that God has cultivated in you. They're on time release. The good news is, if the devil could have killed you by now, he would have. You're still going to Canaan. It's not going to look anything like you hoped. You drew a picture in your heart and in your mind. You thought it would be in front of a, a group of people. I'm about to run. I didn't know I would be in New York. I thought I would spend my life in Chicago. But I now know where my destiny is to be. See? I'm in the process of God. I want everybody in here that's going to make a decision at 201. That come hell, high water, or second coming. The devil will never again pull me out of my process. Come on, praise him until the complaints leave. Israel lost their destiny because they kept murmuring. Oh! Oh! They kept murmuring. Put something else in your mouth. They kept complaining. Now you just spent the last three years murmuring. I feel the Holy Ghost. You spent the last three years complaining. You spent the last three years comparing. At least when we was with Moses, we knew where our food was coming from. We started following you now, and we don't know nothing, but I want somebody that's in the process. I'm in the process. I'm 20, but I'm in the process. Just turned 30, but I'm in the process. I'm still single, but I'm in the process. Healing from my divorce, but I'm in the process. Got rejected by that denomination, but I'm in the process. You won't kick me out. You won't kick me out. I won't be expelled. I'm in... I'm in process. Hey, process. Hey, process, for the sake of my potential, for the sake of my promise, for the sake, why is this happening now? I'm in process. Yeah, you fine. You cute in a mug. But I love myself too much to bring you into a real unfinished process. Wait till I'm processed. Wait till I'm processed. I love you and me better. I got a process. Oh, y'all don't want to have church. You don't want to have church. You want to go to Candyland. But this is about Canaan. 
This is about Canaan. Twists and turns. I gotta go ups and downs. Disappointment and distraction. Nevertheless, I'm in my process. Oh, come on, we going home. Y'all should have let me come back sooner. Slap everybody on your roar and say, stay in the process. Come on. I told you I needed your help. Stay in the process. If they don't open their mouth, hit them harder. I said, stay in the process. If that verse, you don't succeed. Try. I feel God. Try. I said, if that verse, you don't succeed. Try. I believe God is healing your trap. He's delivering your trap. The devil don't want you to try again. You got angry and hurt and wounded, frustrated and bitter. I tell you to find your trap. Find it right now. It's in your belly, right behind your heartbreak. It's right behind your prayer language. Grab it now. Pull it up now. I got a brand new try. Ay, 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 try. Try, try, try. I paid the bill already. Try, 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 try. Why should I try? Because you'll never triumph if you don't learn how to try. If you failed, it's because of a skill that needs to be stronger. Try. Oh, man. I, I thought I would have at least one run up. The devil took your try. He took your try. You got lazy. You got apathetic. You got discouraged. I lose a new try to you. I lose a brand new try. I lose a brand new try. No more condemnation. No more embarrassment. No more shame. Try. 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 Canaan is worth it, y'all. Try. The promise is worth it, y'all. Try. Try. I skip y'all. I just want 10 people that the devil had depression on. Go crazy right now. I said 10. The rest of you can go home. You don't know what the spirit of heaviness is like until you can't get out your bed. You don't know what the spirit of heaviness is like until you need to medicate it with a drink. You don't know what the spirit of heaviness is like until you need a blunt to stop it. Come on, Zion. I want you to regulate your belly. God's getting ready. I said, God's getting ready. I said, God's getting ready to anoint your trap. God's getting ready to anoint your trap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Whoa, uh, that's not the right reaction. Hey, hey. Hey, this is different from the last praise. You don't know depression. You don't know depression. I wasn't coming out the house. Wasn't answering my phone. Didn't want to be who I was. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, whoa, hey. Uh-oh. Hey, this is a different type of praise. The first one was praise because you're good. This is praise because you delivered me. And now, I feel my tribe, or oh, I want my church. Everybody in here that the devil tried to strangle. Everybody in here that the devil tried to kill by asphyxiation. You ain't gonna sing no more. You won't preach no more. You won't ever be who you was. You missed your moment. You missed the opportunity. Now, I got you right where I want to. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh oh, I'm waiting on about 10 more. Praise him. I'm waiting on about 10 more. Be honest. Be honest. I went there. I didn't see it. But the beast came. Told you to kill yourself. End it now. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Don't like that book? Don't go to that church. Don't record that music. Yeah. That's what the devil did. Give me that try. Give me that try. Put on your fur. Wear your collar. 
street is a good morning. It's a good morning. When I see the sun from the rising, from the rising, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. The Lord works every day. Baptize my tribe. Anoint my tribe. Put your fire on my tribe. Well, this is the heritage of them that believe. We get the opportunity to mess up and try. Oh, yeah. Because in every temptation, he gives me a way to escape. I'm going to try. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah. I did it. Messed up. Granddaddy did it. But the difference is the doors of the church I believe those that are still clapping know what it is to fight the spirit of heaviness some of us lost loved ones we lost dreams there's been a spirit of heaviness on you and so I messed up and I reminded you that Canaan is still a reality yeah, hey. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, hold on. Hey, oh, oh. I want you to shout because you're not going to the grave without fulfilling your destiny. Get ready. Your grave is going to be empty. You're going to die an empty man. You're going to die an empty woman. Everything in you is turning on out. Oh, yeah. And if you will dance a little harder, everything your granddaddy and your grandmama did not see, you are an heir. According to the promise, tap into it. You've been thinking about the generational curse. I want you to shout for the blessing. I got generational blessing. Oh, yeah. The curse. Oh, wait a minute. Millennium, I'm just the curse is broken. The curse is broken. The blood is against you. 
Thanksgiving in my heart, and I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, and I will enter. His chords with praise. Come on, sing it if you know. I will say, this is the day that the Lord, He has made. Oh, I will rejoice, for He has made. He has made me glad. Hey, He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice, glory, for He has made me glad. Oh, He has sing it, made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice, for He has made. Yes. Yes. So say yes. From my heart, I'm singing yes. Help me. Yes. Woo. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yeah, I'm talking about Canaan. Yes, Lord. One more time. All the way. Come on, let's go. Come on, open your mouth. Say that. All the way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All the way. Woo! I'm going all the way, come on, all the way, whoa, all the way, Father, you've delivered your word by your spirit, you know what needed to be done and what needed to be said, though I didn't get through my notes, you got through yours, now Father, I'm asking that this word would be cemented fermented even 
in the hearts of your people this week that we have a rubric, a construct for every test that you will allow this week. Now, Father, we lift our emotional selves to you. We lift our psychological selves to you. We even lift our devotional life to you. Blow, Spirit of God, into our personal time with you. Help us, oh God, to deliberate and even discuss what we learned today. So do we bless you that we are under a divine mandate to increase. Help us to know that it's not an option, but it's mandatory that we get bigger than the beast. Thank you now in advance for giving us the victory through transformation and through an embraced process in Jesus' name. If you receive this word and believe that it's just changed the trajectory of October for you, give the Lord a mighty Shabbat. Come on, one more. Oh, I love this noise. Come on, one more. You started off October with the right instructions. I bless you. Come on, right there. Hey, hey, labor there. I bless you. I didn't know what to do before I walked in these doors. I didn't know what you were going to say, but now I understand. Come on, praise him right there. He just changed your season. Shout. I know it's a long service. Shout. I need to hurry up. Listen to me. Listen to me. Mm. One more time. Just put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder and say, increased, increased. I command you to increase. Through it all, you've got to increase. In the face of the devil, I dare you to get bigger. In the face of your adversary, stretch out, taller, stature, capacity, stretch out, grow through it, grow through it. Don't just go through it, grow through it. I'm sorry. Where was that, Javier? Oh, there are people, Lord help me, under the sound of my voice that's never officially accepted Jesus. Please don't get bored. This is important. I need your help. There are people under the sound of my voice that love Jesus. You've been baptized and you're saved. You've just been indifferent about your local assembly. This is not the perfect church. Let me prove it to you. Everybody obey me. If you were a former liar, lift your hand. Put your hand down. If you were a former fornicator, put your hand up. Put your hand down. If you know how to drink, put your hands up. Don't lie. Come on. I have the gift of prophecy. I will expose you. Put your hand up. Put your hand down. If you like to fight and smack people, put your hands up. Put your hand down. What I'm trying to prove to everybody in the room, hear me, is that all of us had a beast. Some of us have a beast. There is no such thing as the perfect church. And if there was, it would become imperfect the minute you showed up. This is a place where broken people can be broken. So I don't want the devil to convince you to not respond to this. You need a house and teaching. Now that's one category of people. But there's another category of people that's starving. You're not getting the right amount of teaching. It's not maturing you or challenging you. It's just encouragement. You can get that from a fortune cookie at your local Chinese food restaurant. But it's not growing you up. And you need a house. You need a home. Now I said it before. But it need to be reiterated in New York City, E.P. Mike. I don't steal sheep. I grow grass. And people come to graze. No disrespect. If you're here and you need to accept Jesus as your personal savior, or 
you believe that with all of the crazy people in the room, you might be one of them. <laughs> and you need a church home that's not intimidated by your beast, where the teaching can help you move through. As if I were giving you a million dollars, run to this altar right now. Come on. If you need to be saved or join this church, come on. All nations, start to pray. Come on. Start to pray. As long as they're coming, we're clapping. Come on. From the balcony. All in the balcony. Come on. Oh, there's more. I believe there's at least 10. Come on. You need a church home. Move, 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 move. Come on. Keep clapping, all nations. We're praying. Come on. In the balcony. You need a church home. You can't do this by yourself. Hey, obey me. Let's go. Come on. I don't care what you did last night. Doesn't matter what you did this morning. Come on. Come on. Hey, all nations, I need you to be altar workers. Start harassing everybody on your row and ask them, are they sure? Let's go. Harass them. Hey, make sure they make eye contact with you. If they speak in the tongues, tap them. You need to join this church. Make it your church home. Come on, are you sure? In the balcony, let's go. If you are without a church home, you need to say, oh, it's at least 80 y'all out there. I'm looking at you right now. What do you got? A pack of cigarettes in your purse. Let's go. Move. Now listen to me. I'm going to say something. There is no condemnation here. If you feel God tugging at you, and I want you to hear me as by the Spirit of God. If you hear God tugging at you to be a part, to change your life, but you can't because you want to accommodate a shacking situation. Listen, an idol is whatever you have to ask God permission for to obey. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. They're coming. Come on. I told you there's at least 10. Come on. Come on. You can do the same all online. You can join this church. We have options for you. Listen, husbands, bring your wives. Wives, bring your husbands. Bring your boyfriends. We'll worry about the bondage later. Just come. We'll fix it. Give us a year. Come on. Listen to me. I'm wrestling. I'm tugging now. There is no such thing as ready. Turn to somebody and say, there is no such thing as ready. If you could get yourself ready without God, you would have done it. Come. It won't fix all the problems, but it will start the process. I don't know why. I'm, something in this balcony is pulling on me. I sense in the spirit that there may be many of you in a domestic violence situation. Maybe you snuck here. There's some of you that are sneaking here even from other houses and you're scared. Don't allow that torment to keep you in a place of stagnation. Come to me. I don't care what your habit is, your addiction is, come now. Yeah. Come. I sense there's about three of you in the room, and I'll rest for as long as need be. There's about three of you in the room that's scared to sacrifice your position. You don't want to lay your certificate down and start over. You like your role as a junior missionary. You love being the deacon's assistant and an armor bearer. I'm talking to you. And you're afraid. You want that religious positioning, but you're dying. I'm challenging you. Come now. All nations, help me harass these people, please. Come on. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Those are not just, uh-oh. There are people in here that are over 50 that feel like this church is too young. Are you looking for the public aid office or for bread? This is not a social club. You don't join churches because you see similar stories. I would follow a four-year-old if they had my deliverance. Humble yourself. It's pride. It's just too young. It's just too young, fine. It's okay. Are you eating or not? I'm going to give you one more chance. If you're in here, you feel like you're not ready. It's too much. We want you to come. Bring your stuff with you. Going once. Oh, I hate that. That's so Baptist. 
<laughs> Is there a warrant? Is there a warrant? <laughs> Is there another? Let's give it up for, now, I, listen, I know the voice of God. And I know there's at least five more of you that are sitting in that seat in a whole wrestle. You're afraid of religious ridicule. I know it. I see it. And I'm not a blind prophet. You're afraid of the ridicule. You, duck, you come here and you duck and you dodge cameras. Because you don't want it known that you're here. You Nicodemus spirit. If you're eating, eat loud. You don't go to the restaurant and eat in the bathroom. Come to the table. Don't try to avoid eye contact. I see it anyway. There's about five of you that's not obeying. I'll give you next week. We're going to celebrate you. You're a preacher. One, two, three, four, five. Let's give it up for these amazing men of God. Come on. Oh, what are the angels doing? Come on. Let's get some brothers to embrace them. Let's get some TLO members. Let's embrace them and welcome them in. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wowzer. Somebody better buy me a steak. Jesus. A little potato. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You're going to, Pastor Matthew, who are they, you're going to follow this. All of you are five new family members. Uh, I want you to follow this lady in the green, and she's going to take you to our new members area and pay all your bills for the year. Come on, she's rich. Let's go. Follow her. Let's give it up one more time for our brand new family members. Come on. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hallelujah. Compliment somebody next to you and say, you look good. Y'all didn't sweat it and spit. You still got it intact. I didn't see no wigs fall off. My church keeps it together, child. Some of y'all was crying and fixed that makeup immediately. You understand? I saw it. Shouting, putting that powder on. Amen. God is so good. Listen, I want you to sew on this. Don't, uh, don't forget to bring a gently, and I, when I say gently, a gently used blanket, okay? If it's been passed down from generations, keep it. And we don't know what's lodged in there. But gently used next Sunday as we help uh, the police department here um, with passing out blankets. I want you to sew. Tell somebody next to you, say sew, 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 sew. If this word bless you, you don't ever, let me tell you something. Some, I don't know who she was. There was a woman, and this is a tradition in all nations. There was a woman while I was preaching that didn't wait for me to get to this part. She ran up to the altar and put her money on the altar. Yeah. I taught all nation Chicago to do that. If, if a point hits you, you don't wait for the offering. You create your own offering. Hello. You are more than welcome. When we go to a new building or whatever, if something hits you and it's for you, you sow into a coming contract with it immediately. Put it on the altar. Do what you need to do. I'm going to give you the opportunity to sow into this because I really do believe we've shifted an era. An era has shifted. I said an era has shifted. An epoch has shifted for you. In the, uh, oh, th uh, this is why I don't need to be doing this. In the, uh, uh, I think that, yeah, you, come on, man. You know I'm talking to. Yeah, that's how you know. You always look to the left. Stand up, man. Yeah, yeah, go team. Come on. The answers that you came here seeking will meet you by Tuesday. There. The most critical decision of the last 48 months of your life is before you and it has you frustrated. The Lord is about to give you wisdom on where to move. Get ready. I see the transit being smooth. And I see the job setting you up for your own entrepreneurial efforts. It has been frustrating because you didn't know whether to go and work for them or work for yourself. But God is creating and staggering your timing. The mentors are about to show up in your life so that your real estate dream will manifest. And you will be able to do that that is in your heart to do. The Lord called you today at about 1.12 p.m. into focus. And that idea that hit your mind was not an epiphany. It was the doing of God for this next season. Get ready. This December will look nothing like last one. And God is going to revolutionize your career and revive your dreams. Put those hands together for the Lord. 
sunglasses, I'm not going to keep going here. You've been frustrated because you want to be able to be active. You want to be able to serve. You want to be able to give of yourself in a deeper way. But something is going on because you want to do something that you don't have the natural means to do. And you've been giving up yourself, particularly to, uh, I see some men around you, your family members. You've been sowing and creating shelter. And what the Lord wants you to know, he's about to open the door for you to obey him. He gave you instructions in January. And it seems like it's been lagging and lagging and lagging. But the door is about to open for you to serve in ministry in the way that you're supposed to and not in the way that you want to. Your comfort zone is being destroyed. Now, I speak to that experience with that Jezebel spirit. I see a woman in white that tried to ruin your reputation. I see a purple room and a conversation with a woman in white and two armor bearers. And what I see is that you were serving and then you were blackballed in the midst of a church. And you went into a service and you weren't sitting where you usually sit. And then the, the, the husband of the woman got up and preached at you. Aimed the pain in your direction and all you wanted to do was serve. So then you sat out for a while until you just disappeared and then you went online. What God wants you to know is he's pulling you from out of that closet now. And he's getting ready to move you to altar work. Now, this is why the devil has tried to assault your body. He knows that if he can drain you of your energy, yeah, and if he can mess with your sleep, he knows that you won't have the energy to do what you need to do. But I prophesy the last seven years of your pain is getting ready to be overturned. Now, I see something very specific, and I don't want to get in trouble, but you were robbed. An inheritance was taken from you. And there was a situation where um, you didn't know whether to take it to legal matters or just find your peace. The Lord told me to tell you when a thief is caught, he has to repay seven times. I prophesy a refund to your life, a time lost. Now, the way prophecy works is if it's in a 20-foot radius, you get to tap in and receive it now. Come on. The lie of the devil is you can't get time back. But the Bible says, I will restore, relate. The years, relate, that the locusts and the canker worm beast have stolen from you. Somebody say, restore. Amen. So we're going to sow. We're going to sow. Okay, here are your way. And whatever, uh, uh, the white, Miss Ma'am, you, a witch has claimed your life. A witch, sorry guys. A witch. A witch that tried to get money from you for a missions project that did not happen. She wanted to be your prayer partner. A witch. And what she does is follow you online. Mm-hmm. And uh, this started about two and a half years ago, but then she started creating other po uh, uh, profiles to follow you and to torment you and to call you out of your intercessory call. And out of your call, I see uh, revelations and writings and mysteries in books. And uh, you were thinking to travel. For whatever reason, I'm seeing another continent. And uh, I'm seeing a group of them doing things that's trying to convince you to come. And what had happened was your generosity had come to the place of a peak and they were trying to take advantage of it. It was a scam, ma'am. A scam. And it had discouraged you so much so to the point that you had decided to never again respond to a call to ministry. Not so. God's going to use you after a season of healing. Yeah. He's going to use you tremendously to plow, follow, growl. Now, I want to be careful with you will not uh, inherit the manipulation of the person that taught you to prophesy. If this offends anybody, take it up with him, because I don't know anything. You won't be a, a, a charlatan that uses revelation to manipulate people of money. Make sense? God's purifying the gift of God in you, because he's going to use you to build an intercessory army to deal with and to forbid second heaven activity. The Lord wants me to tell you, thank you for not moving. There were boxes packed in your head and life emotionally. 
and you chose to stay and wait on the season of God, a new mantle is coming upon you for prayer, for intercession, for deliverance. And your family rejected you by divine design. You come up in a holiness experience. Uh -huh. and They did it on purpose because they didn't understand what they considered your strangeness. But the spirit of grace is going to use you uniquely. You give it one year and you will be a totally different woman. It is so and it will not be otherwise. How about Sheree, thank God that you didn't go to the altar with that man. That crook. Because you gave him some money and you were putting your name on some stuff. And you fought your conviction trying to mother him. And when you found out what you found out, you got depressed. He kept promising marriage and promising that he would be there. I see a boy for your son that he would be a father figure and stand there and then you found out he was a compulsive liar. He's not a bad man, he's a broken one, but he is not yours. And right now, God's speaking to you because he's trying to creep his way back. Mm. Been trying to find your number. And uh, the reason is, he wants you to fix a life emergency that he's in because he owes somebody money. The Lord wants me to tell you, you are not to go back. You forgave him for the time he put his hands on you. You are not to go back. He is filled with the spirit of rage. And God doesn't want your baby boy around that. This is why your son was cutting up in school. Because of the rage and the anger that was around that. You did the best thing in your life by breaking up with that man. Now the way this works is if you're in a 20 foot radius... I want somebody that's grateful for a breakup. Oh well, yeah, sometimes it takes a breakup to break through. I was in love, but I was lost. I was deceived and dated. I thank God I didn't make it down the aisle with that one. Hallelujah! From my belly. Hey, hey. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We gotta go. We have to go. Some y'all leave me alone. Hey, go away. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. This is a Sunday morning service. It's only supposed to be 90 minutes. Y'all are crazy. All right, we're going to sow into this word a breakup. Where would you be if you didn't break up? Come on up. Woo! Woo! There was an assignment, ma'am, to your last name. The devil was trying to pervert it. I thank God he exposed it. Show me your colors. Sorry, guys. All right. All nations, we have to go. Our visitors are not coming back. Shh. Woo. I thank God for good breakups. Necessary exits. You were reliant on my sickness. But I fooled around and got healed and you didn't need me no more. God break the power of codependency. You were in love with the broken me. But the broken me is dead now. I've been made whole. Glenn, 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 stop, Glenn. sorry y'all get an offering in your hand everybody this is too late this service is too long get an offering in your hand Sheree 
If you will run, you'll get that house this time next year. Come on. You apply for a mortgage. The bank said no. But it's about to be yes, 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 yes. Put your phones out, put your phones out. We have to go. Put your phones out. Put your phones out. All call everybody. All nations NY. Dot com. Everybody, put your phone out. All nations NY.com. Or all nations NY. Text it. Everybody, 77977. We gotta go. All Nations NY, 77977. Or you can come and drop it in the basket now. Hurry up. We got to go. Those online, I wanna challenge you. You could probably pay for this whole service. Do it now. God's moving by his spirit. And I promise you, next week will not be this long. I'm going to keep it to 90 minutes and we're going home, maybe. Oh, Lord, I'm hungry. Stand up, we're getting dismissed. Everybody, I bless you in Jesus' name. We're about to dismiss in an unusual way. Don't dance, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. But I want you to make this decree. Post it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, Black Pen Planet. I want you to repeat after me and we go on home. Lift your hands, come on. Get a good preacher voice. We have to go. Unless y'all gonna give some more money, we got to go. Repeat after me with everything in you. I louder I, I have no successful enemies so be it i'll see you next week come on <laughs>